Good morning, and welcome to The Brewview, the Instagram Live podcast where Kanama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. Today, we are incredibly excited to bring to The Brewview my good friend, Joe Nelson. If you guys don't know Joel Nelson, you're going to get to know him today. Joe Nelson is an absolute shredder when it comes to Kendama. He is a honed pro of every degree, and I have seen him grow in his skill, in his confidence, and in his play to receive this new sponsorship with Chrome Kendama that he has over the past several years, from when I first met him at MKO 2018, and he thrashed me in a game of Ken outside the hotel that we were staying at. Honestly, guys, when I met Joe, it was actually pretty crazy. I didn't realize that he wasn't sponsored at the time, and I definitely thought he was already sponsored by Chrome because he was that good in 2018, and he was so under the radar. Nobody really knew who this guy was, this kid from Jersey who was just shredding people. Absolute animalistic play style. The guy who was honed from everything classic and now is honed with everything modern. And I want to dive into a little bit of his mindset of how he approaches Kendama and how he competes so well. So I'm really excited for this episode with Joe. We are going to be diving in here shortly. But before we do, I want to say a couple things. We just had an amazing weekend watching IKO, the Internet Kendama Open, which is the rebrand of the Instagram Kendama Open that launched last year, hosted by Lotus Kendamas, and then this year hosted on the Sweets Kendamas stream. If you aren't already following the stream and you are a listener to this show, make sure to go over to twitch.tv slash Sweets Kendamas, hit them up with a follow. They're doing great work to grow the community here. But big special shout out to Lotus Kendamas for hosting yet another community event, another event with com- competition in the Kendama community. It was amazing. We got to see some incredible play in both the Amateur Open and in the Pro Open, and we got to see an all-international squad take the AM Open. We had Bruno from Latvia, PC from Hong Kong, and Arturs from Latvia take first, second, and third in the Amateur Open. And in the Pro Open, we had Liam Nick and Bryson Lee take the top three positions for IKO. So if you didn't catch it, I'm sure the VOD is still up there on the Twitch stream. You guys can head over to twitch.tv slash sweetskindamas and go watch that. few other little shout outs before we dive into this episode. One, there was also an announcement from Lotus at the event of a new collab that they're doing. They are dropping a collaboration Kendama with PDOX. 18 PDOX 18, and we are actually going to be learning a lot about PDOX today because Joe is part of the PDOX squad or the gang or who even knows what it is. That's what we're going to be finding out is what is PDOX and why are they collabing with Lotus and what do they do in the world uh, of Kendama. So if you don't know anything about PDOX, you don't know anything about what's going on there, you definitely want to be around for this live today. Uh, Secondly, you guys know recently, if you've been listening to the show, we've had a lot of European influence on uh, the Bruvia recently. We had uh, Native represented, we had Kanama France and Do, and just as of yesterday or this weekend, I believe, or today, I don't even remember the exact day it was launched, they dropped a new collaboration Kanama, the Graphite Kanama, which looks incredibly beautiful, and you guys should definitely go check it out. They are doing some wonderful work over in Europe, so go check them out. Last announcement that I want to make before we get Joe on here and before I ask the question I always ask every morning for you guys when we do Brewview. One last thing is Brewview is on YouTube. Guys, if you didn't know this, we have a YouTube channel for Cafe Kanama and I've been uploading past episodes of the Brewview on there in hopes to reach a wider audience and bring more people into this caffeinated community that we all love where we just chat Dhamma, chat stories and inspire one another to deeper play. So guys, uh, if you want to support it, uh, go head over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button, go like one of the videos, and catch it up. They are on there. And for those of you that are you know, kind of annoyed that you don't want to watch it on IGTV but still want to get the video experience, this is probably your best way to do that. I'll eventually be doing some other stuff on the YouTube channel. we got some concepts we're working on, but uh, for now, it's just the, the content there and a video recap of Brew Battle 2020, which we are beginning to plan for 2021. So with all that said, I want to know from you guys down in the chat today, before we dive in, what are you drinking this morning as you join the review? You guys know that as always, every week when we do this, we like to take a little bit of time to thank the community, shout out the community, and give some love to the caffeinated individuals who show up here every week to drink a cup of coffee with us in Chad Dama. So what are you drinking this morning? You guys know me. I'm always drinking a cup of coffee at review. I don't think that's ever going to change. I've thought about it once, just to throw you for a loop. But not today. We're drinking a nice AeroPress from a local roaster here in Calgary. 
uh, Rosso. You've probably heard me mention them before. They're one of my favorites. We got a couple people down dropping what they are drinking. Mar Dillon with the Agua. We got Nick Deeps Dama with the Water Gang. Kendama Jin Churiki. 34, a brand new Patreon subscriber. Thank you, Kendama Jin Churiki. We got your questions for a future episode that I'm so excited about. And I might leak it in this episode, but you guys are not going to believe it. It's so exciting. Coming up in the future. We got Bang Energy from Kendama Jin Churiki and Water on Deck. Leo Lunar with the Orange Gatorade. Nick Deeps Dama, iced or not iced. This is this is hot, hot coffee today. Channeling my inner Adam and drinking a dark roast. Well, I typically only drink light roasts. Uh, Brett Walters, Patreon sub. He's drinking that Sonic G Fuel. We got Jimmy John with the Japanese imported coffee. Adrian Esteban with the Green Tea Gang. And Dustin A. Nutt with a nice cup of medium roast. Austin Donovan with the Great Gatorade. And Wilter Beast with the Boy Gatorade. What even is that? We got Kanama Fiend with that hungover Diet Coke. And so much more. There's so many other names that are dropping in here. And I wish we could say them all today. So next week, be quicker. Because we need to get our friend Joe Nelson, Chrome sponsored player, rep for 18 PDOX 18. And maybe Sunday Co. Guys, would you welcome Joe by smashing that like button as we dive into this week's brew view. Joe. What's up, man? How are you? Dude, I'm doing so good. This feels like a long time coming, man. For real, that's such a crazy story that you told about the Ken game that we had in uh, 18 here in uh, Minnesota. That was crazy. Yeah, man, you were outside in like the, the smoker's lounge out there where everybody was just you know getting their <laughs> cigs in, hitting them vapes, you name it. Absolutely. And Joe Nelson's out there just thrashing, thrashing pro players and every other player alike in games of Ken like it was oh nobody's gosh. business. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to challenge this guy. I think I got a point on you. I remember hitting... I remember hitting one trick or two tricks on you, but you definitely thrashed me in the end. You were so honed that, that year. It was a crazy yeah, year that, for you. That was, my, uh, that was my first comp outside of the East Coast, outside of like the tri-state area, like locally. And I, I, um, I was telling people like just super OG homies, like Austin's in here. I know mm -hmm. Jaden's in here. MJR, Finn, like all these OG homies. I'm like, I'm like, I do not care about how I place in comp. I don't want to win open. I don't care if I lose. <laughs> I want to take souls and Ken. That's that's <laughs> all I was saying that year. And I that that's, that's dude. And you did. You <laughs> literally took souls. It wasn't even funny. You. I think you spent more time playing games of Ken than people spent time watching competitions. Absolutely. Like you were outside just challenging anyone left and right. And it was it was so humbling. You had a hunger to play <laughs> people and make your name known. And you did. You absolutely did. Yeah, that was the that was the goal. I don't know. I didn't want to because I'm not these those opportunities to go far out of state just by myself and things like that were uh far between you know what i'm saying they didn't come mm -hmm. often for me so when i when i did get those opportunities i really wanted to hammer home like i'm here right. like i'm definitely i want to be a presence here yeah that's fair yeah. that was the same for me a little bit i i took a different approach i definitely didn't try and claim souls and games again because i was not at that level and i realized <laughs> that very quickly after playing against you but when i went to mko 18 i went with my good friend sean and, and another friend and yeah. we drove we vlogged the whole thing the videos up on one of my other youtube channels and uh it was just we went there to go experience it meet the people and you were one of the standouts that we met you and and that was oh, wild to me because thank you no, no, seriously, seriously, you're one of the standouts. And, and what was weird for me was that you weren't someone that I knew beforehand. You were just someone I met mm -hmm. at this. And I was like, yo, this guy is going somewhere. This guy must be sponsored by Chrome because you were you were already playing Chrome Damas back then. You were just grinding it, playing it, honing it in. But you weren't sponsored by them. You were just you were just hustling. It was cool. Yeah. It was super cool. Yeah, man, Dude. it was just love. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey. <laughs> That's a nice little prelude, but before we dive too deep into our conversation today, yeah. I always like to ask a couple warm-up questions here. You know, I always right. want to know, and the, and the people in the chat always want to know, what are you drinking this morning? Standard. I, um, I'm not usually a coffee drinker, but I did have to indulge for today, of course. So I, we have, I think it's Seattle's Best. Okay. It's Seattle's yeah. Best. What is that, like a uh, Starbucks blend or something? Yeah, something like that. Okay, okay. And then I put some put some half and half and some brown sugar in this little right. Naruto cup. Oh my goodness, are you are you a weeb? A little bit. I love anime. Ooh. It's just it's so fire. 
me uh K- kareem was hanging out at my place last night and we were watching uh soul eater we we just started watching soul eater i've never seen soul it before. Is amazing yeah, yeah soul we're... it's very good the same guy makes uh i think the same animator makes fire force as well yeah yeah same guy yeah. that's what he was saying and kareem really likes fire force so who knows we're gonna we're gonna probably watch some more today and, and keep going Please we do. only got like two or three episodes <laughs> in we just met the the cast you know the three different meisters and their and their weapons <laughs> absolutely yeah, that's right. such a great show though it's so good <laughs> i i recently this year i've been getting into anime it's been it's been fun it's been a cool little little journey we watched death note we watched um a bunch of studio ghibli and oh yeah uh, what's the other one uh, uh full metal alchemist watch Bro- brotherhood of course brotherhood yeah okay yeah, yeah. you know you don't watch the other one I, I was told don't watch the other one <laughs> no. no because the because at a certain point the manga or the manga i'm not sh- yeah. sure how to pronounce it it stops and but the anime was continuing going so the animator was like all right cool so we're just gonna continue with our story and then once the manga caught up they remade the first part and just continued right. with like what's originally for right this yeah yeah, that's what I heard. Some, some along. It, it's just more authentic. It's like the more real story. Anyway, yeah. I, we're getting into it slowly but surely. <laughs> I'm slowly beginning to appreciate the world of anime a little bit more. So much to unlock. It's like I, Kendama. There's just so much that you just got to try. Endless possibilities. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. I, I always want to know, um, this is one of my favorite questions that we've been asking this year on the review for season two. If you could teach any one person their first bike, past or present, who would it be? I missed that. I'm so sorry. My internet yep. cut out a little bit. Yeah. My apologies. Hey, all good. All good. This this is a, an ongoing thing with the show. Internet. Of course. Uh, if you could teach anyone their first spike, past or present, you know, live or dead, who would it be? <sighs> Doom. Doom. MF Doom. MF Doom. Yeah. Oh. My, like, my biggest artistic inspiration, for sure. Do you think he ever touched the Kendama? Do you think he ever played one? No. I don't think so. I think it was think before. So? I think it was, bo- I think it never became like a, like a fad. I think it was too niche. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Even at that time, even mm. in the nineties, early. What 2000s. a man to to live a life and never play Kanama, just seems yeah. less than full. That's crazy <laughs> to us because we're yeah because I I really can't imagine where like what I would do with my day. Sometimes like I don't know what to do with my hands. If I'm bored and need to like meditate a little bit, I'll pick up a Kandama. It's just yeah. so many outlets that Kandama is there for. That yeah. If exactly. I didn't have it. I've reading yep. now. Nah, Dude, reading, I, I stand in grocery lines and I play Kendama. Actually, we, we went to the mall yesterday. I went to go buy this new fit. Uh, we went to J- Jack and Jones literally wearing like this you nice, nice ta- you know, Pantone color, whatever. You know, it's all, I, I think it looks decent. And we walk into this store and I'm playing Kendama and one of the guys in there, he's like, yo, Holmes, uh, you guys play Kendama? That's so cool. I used to have one of those. I still do. And I like, yo, I just toss him the one that I'm playing and, and he just starts playing, doing Ken flips and stuff. We chatted up for a while with this guy and he's like, yo, do you want my staff discount? And I was like, uh, yeah. So I got like a full fit of Jack and Jones clothes, 200 and some plus dollars or whatever worth of clothing for 50, like for 75 what? bucks or something. So I got shorts, I got two shirts, I got a crew neck. We, we hooked it up for 75 bucks. It was like, mm! dude, so if I Guys, need some new merch, I'm coming to Canada and I'm going to just Canada. play Dama. I'm going to just play Dama, play Dama, in, Dama in that store. Yeah. And I'll be like, Yo, yeah, it, you want a discount? I'll be like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He'll see you play and he'll be like, "Yo, this guy's better. I'll give you an even bigger discount. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get, just take it. You, I'm, I'll pay you to take it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're we're gonna hopefully get him out to some jams here. And I, we told him about the podcast, so and and he's following me. So who knows? He might be tuning in. We're gonna find out. But seriously, have you ever? There's a question I, I've never thought to ask this, but have you ever gotten anything from like playing kendama out in public, going to stores or anything like that? Like the dama perks of like teaching someone, and they're like, "Yo, Holmes, uh, you want my staff discount? How about this free cinnamon bun? Whatever it is, you ever get anything like that?" Not that I can think of, to be honest with you. To be honest, I've never really uh, been anywhere and they've been so hyped that they offer something from them. I've I've given away plenty of damas and I've <laughs> given plenty of staff members their first spike experience, but never uh, I've never gotten like like a reward or like a discount or anything like that. It's crazy. I guess got, because I, I, I hear stories hard. like that. That's what I'm saying. Because I hear stories like that and I hear like, oh, I got this case of beer that they were gonna throw away and i'm like yeah well could have been me like that's Dude, awesome I, but are you are you the type of guy do you wear your kendama in public go everywhere with it around your neck is that you or no if i don't have a sidekick if you don't have I, a sidekick personally i like to just when i leave the house i don't know how 
everyone else feels but i personally like to like put myself together i like to make sure the fit looks good i'm i make i yeah. make sure like sometimes i make sure the dama matches the fit yeah yeah for like, real like light blue jeans i got the chrome osohan white tama it looks yeah. good okay. so i like a sidekick because it's more it's more of a fashion piece and it right. makes it makes your kendama a fashion piece that adds to your outfit rather than just like having it on oh, your side see? so it's easy i think it's more of a fashion piece that's okay i i actually like see that. it hanging around your neck as part of the fashion piece too like that's a different style of wear and you can you, i've had i remember i got a photo like way back on my instagram somewhere if, if you find it go like like it someone down in the chat so people know about it but it's uh i was like rollerblading this is shortly after i dislocated my elbow and i couldn't bike anymore and i had this like tan shorts white shirt and i had one of these big like uh straw hats on and it was yes. like that brown white brown and i had uh, a Kendama USA, the Casper half split that was like brown and white and it had the brown Ken. And so it was like brown, white, brown or however yeah. the ratios went. And it was like a yeah. perfect match. And I was like, I am symmetrical. <laughs> <laughs> I am one with my Kendama. <laughs> no, because if you see your Tama matching your shorts, there's just a little like, there's just a something about that. You're like, mm. or like your Ken matches your shoes. You're like, yeah, that that's hard. Like that, yeah. that looks sick. Yeah, All right, well, cool. it, all that to say, guys, go out in public with your condoms. Don't be ashamed. Who knows? You might get 50% off at your favorite clothing store. Who knows? Never be ashamed. Nobody thinks it's whack. If they say it's whack, it's misplaced love. I'm telling yeah. you. They think yeah, it's just, cool, but they don't want to admit that it's cool. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Be you, man. Just wear it. Own it. Love it. All right. Uh, exactly. Third question before we really dive into the meat of our combo here today. Uh, who is the most inspiring canola player to you today? Oh, man. Wow. Oh my goodness. Can I give like, can I give one per era of like when I've been playing Kanama? No, I have, no, like, no. Just like, right now, just, just right one. now. Not, not the most inspiring person that got you into it or like overarching, but like today, if you're like, if you're looking up to one person today right now, whether or not it's play style, culture, whatever they're doing, who's like the one person that everybody should know about that you really look up to right now? I mean, he's already known, but I'd say the pro, the newest pro for Chrome, I'd say Dylan. Dylan, mm -hmm. like, he he constantly pushes Dama and like just the way he plays and the tricks are just no one else is formatting tricks like that and it's it's more or less like a motivation for me to think outside the box rather than mm -hmm. think like him if you know what I'm saying yeah I don't think and anybody can better, think like yeah. him no, no nobody thinks this way not. he yeah he's always been a big he's one of one yeah. yeah he's insane. I, I loved Dylan growing up when I got into Kanama. Obviously, like, Dylan's been in the game for a long time, and, and he's pretty well known in the game for a long time when he was with Kusa. Dylan Westmoreland, for those of you that aren't, aren't yeah, familiar with sorry. what we're talking about. D-Westy. Uh, D-Westy, as everybody would know. Um, the, my favorite edit, one of my favorite edits of all time is Downtown Days, where him and TJ yeah. Polsnick just rip it downtown, and he's hitting whack tricks, and it just looks like the most fun that anyone has ever <laughs> had playing Kandama in, in yeah, an edit. Man. Like, uh, that was the edit that literally inspires me. My go-to Kendama song is September, and it's only because of that edit. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so yeah. sick. My, my, my favorite edit for a while was Nick G's Champ Mod from 2017, yeah, 16, the red and blue with the stars. Yeah. Until, until Dylan's DJ Pro Mod, the POV 3 or POV 4 came out. That, that was, yeah. that, I feel like that pushed, that pushed tricks, that pushed, like, trick structure and it just like pushed me to really like be a better canal player in that way to like to like really sweat out and like not care who's around you just set your trick and like be great in the moment because he yeah. like he pulls up and he'll just start session and everybody gets up and starts session because everybody feels the energy around him that like just wants to play then he'll start a game it's all just lit and it's better that not better it's nice that he's on my team as well because i get to see him on trips yeah. and just like just jam it's lit it's awesome yeah man he's a cool guy i uh, hope to get him on the on the show one day i, I think i've talked to him once and he, i think he said he was a little shy but who knows we'll get him on here soon we'll get d westy would love to, to love to get him on here okay uh we're gonna dive in here to a bit of a conversation journeying through a little bit of your life what drives Absolutely. you in kanama talking about the different things you're involved with whether or not it's Absolutely. work school chrome pdocs maybe sunday a little bit of everything 
Um, but before we do, I want to remind those of you in the chat that this is a live conversation and you have the option to participate in it today by asking questions. <laughs> Uh, there is a wonderful chat function down below called the comment section. Drop some comments in there, engage with the other live listeners. But if you want your questions asked, put them in the Q&A tool. That's that question box. Otherwise, I'm going to miss them. So put them in the Q&A tool and we will ask them about halfway through and at the end if there is time remaining. With all that said, Joe, you ready to dive in? Yes, sir. Let's get it. I'm Dude, excited. I I am excited. Uh, before we really like dive into your Kenama story, what do you, okay, I want to know what you do for work because you asked us to postpone the review <laughs> another 30 minutes because you were hustling, you were working today. We had oh, to grind yeah. to make this happen. What was keeping you? I am, I'm the newly assistant manager at a Jersey Mike Subs. <laughs> what, what is Jersey Mike Subs? It's a, it's a chain that started out of Point Pleasant, New Jersey. I, I forget if it's, it's, 1956, I remember this, by a guy named Peter Cancro. Him and his high school buddies got a loan from their football coach to open up a sub shop just to have a place to make money on, on the side and stuff. Yeah. And it's now grown to like this international sub chain and he's like a multimillionaire. Okay, I've never yeah. heard of this. They haven't made it to Canada then yet. Or if they have, it's pretty- Very American. Right it's very, very East American. Coast like, it's very East Coast like centered. It's very, it, there's a, a bunch Okay. In, new york and jersey so like okay if you you're a sandwich guy then sandwich expert what do you yes. what do you get i know um they, at subway they call them sandwich artists do you guys have a fancy name for for the people that work at uh, jersey mike's we do not just employees <laughs> <laughs> employees and, and assistant managers Whereas yes sir if if i were to come to jersey mike's what is the best sub to get there or best sandwich to get there if All I right. if I could only ever get one sandwich in my lifetime going to Jersey Mike's, how would you make it for me? If I just Definitely. said, Joe, make me a sandwich. All right. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it how you're supposed to like say it to us. Okay. So we make it fast and then I'll like explain to you what it is. Yeah. So it's, it's a number 13 Mike's way. And I think the best way to have it is Mike's way with mayonnaise. So it's going to be cheese, ham, black forest ham, paprika ham, salami, pepperoni, onions, lettuce, tomato, oil, vinegar, oregano, salt, mayonnaise. Dude, this thing's going to be thick. And you just squeeze it and cut it and oh my slap gosh. it in your face. Yeah. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. It's pretty okay. good. Okay. It's just a very like, it's just a very like pepperoni heavy kind of taste. It's yeah, that, that thing's going to give you the meat sweats for sure. <laughs> oh yeah. If you're not used to it, it's six different kinds of meat, man. <laughs> you, you roll up to the jam and you're sweating on your way out the car to even go play and Dolly. <laughs> Hop out the car with your giant sandwich bag over your shoulder. You're going to have dogs coming after you in the park. <laughs> There's, they're barking from the park. They can smell it from a mile away. Like, what are the dogs doing? <laughs> uh, that's deadly. That's awesome. Sick. So, uh, so awesome. you're working, you're assistant manager. How long have you been there for? Yeah, it's cool. I've been there for uh, seven, eight months. We started, wait, September, October, November, December into oh, June. Oh, so you're climbing so I, so that ten months. ladder fast. 10 months, yeah. So nine, 10, ten months. 10 months, my boy's assistant manager. I have Not crazy, only does he weird. take souls and Ken, he also takes, takes everybody's souls. jobs. <laughs> and I'll take you sandwiches too, if you're not careful. <laughs> um, no, but it's it's super cool because I, I, um, I had to go to Chrome House grand opening week mm -hmm. i went to chrome house so i did the training and then i missed our first week and then i came back and i'm like all right so i have to hustle and i've just been every time i show up i just focus on work and then go home play domo and fall asleep yeah okay so yeah. you're in minnesota are you in minneapolis like kanama hub of the world i'm an hour and 10 i think we're south of minneapolis okay. in rochester i'm in rochester, in rochester. Okay, yes, so not not quite there. Uh, where is Chrome House? You 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 said you took a little vacay in your first week of of work to go to to Chrome House. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so first Chrome House was um first Chrome House was in this place called Black Hawk, Colorado. It was okay, hour and a half, two hours outside of Boulder in the Rocky Mountains, and it was this it was this big wooden house, a nice porch, gas fire, yard, walkway. And there was a dip in the trees that you can see the sunset over the mountains. Oh. It was gorgeous. And we seshed until our legs hurt and super great. It was awesome. It was a great experience. That, was that the NACO weekend? Was this before you were sponsored by Chrome or after you were sponsored? That was after I was sponsored by Chrome. Okay. And was that for the NACO weekend? Because you guys that, did Chrome House yes. for NACO. 
that was the first Chrome House was for NACO weekend. Yeah, the second was for Battle, but the first was for right. NACO, yeah. Okay, crazy. Okay, so t take us back in time. We'll catch up to the Chrome story here in a little bit. Absolutely, but yeah. I want to know, before Dama, like, how, what were you doing? You were in school, high school student. When, when did, first off, when did Kendama enter your life? Like, how old were you? I was six years now. I'm 21. So 15. I was 15. 15. I was eighth grade, no, freshman year. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like grade, yeah. 10th grade it's, or 9th grade. It's or all a blur at this point. <laughs> high school was crazy. Um, but yeah. I was 14, 15 when I started getting into Kendama. I was 15 when I was gifted one and I played every day. But before that, let me show you what I was doing. I've been yeah, doing sure. this for 10 plus years. Yo, yo, yo. Okay. Yo, yoing. Yeah, I've been yo, yoing for, I want to say six or seven years before Kendama. Oh, okay. For real. So, okay. Yeah. Talk us through. I, I actually had no idea. I did not know that at all. Uh, yeah. How did you get into yo-yo? Catch us up a little bit through the yo-yo story, because I imagine that yo-yo plays a role in Kendama for you, or at least in some of that transition. Absolutely. So it's it's my my best friend. One of my best friends' name is Ethan Chung. He grew up uh, he grew up one block west, three blocks south in this mm -hmm. uh, gated community. He grew up um, he grew up playing this, and he's sponsored by One Drop. He's a four-time top 10 in the world uh, so, competitor. So he's yeah, saucy. He's, he's good. He is, he is one of the best I've ever seen in my life. And he got me into this. I started being his like practice buddy who would go through the clicks and the points and tournaments with him. And I'd go to competitions with him. I placed, I went past, no, I didn't. I placed top 10 in prelims at, um, it's Northeast Regionals. It's like okay. NER in like 2014. I have a DVD somewhere that I have to no, find you don't. Of, of my prelim. Yeah, his dad, his dad filmed it and put it on a DVD and sent it to my dad recently. And he just sent it to me. It was crazy. Okay, give me, give me some perspective for a second. How big was Yo-Yo back then? And like, what, what was the size of these events? Was it huge? Yo-Yo was extremely bigger than Kanawa. Okay. Yeah, like, extremely bigger. I'd say, I'd say five times the amount of people as... If you go to a comp in 2014, it's like the homies. The biggest ones are like Battle in Seattle and t t a Tacoma Takeover for yeah. Kendama. Well, you'll have like maybe 50 to 70 people there. You'll have yeah. more than 100 day one of any given comp. For Yo-Yo, for it doesn't even matter yes. how big or small. Just, just yeah. that big. Basically, it, it, there's a lot of kids. It's very, there's so many, there's so much more kids in it. Yeah. Okay, so sure. how many people would have been at the NER the event? Is that a huge event? That's a that's the regionals for like Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York kind of area. Okay. So that was a big that was a big event. If you won that, you got seated, you got seated to nationals. You got so seated prelims to straight nationals. Straight through pass to go to yeah, nationals. You, you got your fee waived, pass waived, because back then you have to buy the tickets to the individual comps, but then you'd have to buy the yo yo pass to compete at the comp. Yeah, so, so this thing's like a huge old pyramid scheme of, of yeah. things that you got to buy to be it's, a part there's of. There's like an official national yo-yo league that runs them, that like gets seated and it's like a competition. It's all okay. official and, and you have to buy a competition pass to even compete at these events. No way. And so were you were you getting yeah. pretty deep into this? And so you, like how you were what? You said you'd been playing for six or seven years before Konami. So you were young. Yeah. I was, ne yeah, so I was young, but I was mainly, I was never a competition yo-yoer. Like, my favorite, my favorites to watch were, like, Zach Gormley, if anybody in the no. audience knows who that is. He, um, his play style is, like, very unique in the way he plays. He's focused on, on how he can make it, it look in his hands and not necessarily how fast he can go. So he'll do very awkward movements and things like that to set himself apart from the rest. So I thought... If I could make the basics look unique, then I'd be one of the best instead of getting all like trying to be faster than everybody crazy else. speed combos and like slack tension whips and things like crazy stuff like that. Yeah, right. That's crazy. That's super cool. And and I think that's probably characterized some of your play style in Kendama as well, because you, you took kind of a unique bend to how you played and you focused on doing. Like when I, I remember watching you play like MK18 and you were doing all of the old school tricks so consistently and honed in, in a de degree of professionality that you probably don't see a lot of other people do. Like you had all of those tricks that you were doing so precisely honed yeah. 
and so perfect in your form and everything. Like you were very, very conscientious of how you did your tricks, not just doing them, but how it looked and how you did it. Whether or not it was easy or hard, you made it look really, really cool. Because that's what that my big thing was, that's what separates you from the rest is like, if you're doing the trick, and if people like my like, oh, that's not just a bird flip. That's Joe's bird flip. Yeah, that's yeah, it's like you do it different. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, we'll we'll dive into that because that I think For is sure. a whole yeah. concept that people need to get, especially absolutely. when they're looking at like, oh, I want to get sponsored. Don't I just have to land all these hard tricks? Well, okay, yeah, maybe that's like a piece of it, but oh, you, no. you got to be pretty good at Kanama to get sponsored baseline. <laughs> but it's way bigger than that. Like it's like it's how you look. It's the style. It's the character. It's everything. Anyways, we'll dive into yeah. that. I'm sure. I got a ramp. I'll take a. I'll take, an, I'll take a Austin Donovan whirlwind. Over a Dude, Zach G guy, triple whirlwind any day. Any what, day. Uh, Austin Donovan, if you guys ever watch him do whirlwinds, it's literally <laughs> the weirdest thing I've ever seen. He he pinches, he has his thumb in the cup, and he's just like, and like does a little flip. It's, it's, it's disgusting. So, it's so it's, cool. It, no, no one else does it like him. It's so yeah. sick. <laughs> okay, so you were playing yo-yo. You were going to all these events. How serious were you about yo-yo? And why did you give it up for Konama, oh, if I that's was, what happened? I was so serious. I was like even more serious than when I was trying to get sponsored for Chrome. Like, it was weird. I would go to school. I would go to school and then come home. And I wouldn't try to learn new tricks. I would just try to make the tricks I already knew, like, butter. Like, smooth. Look amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's why to, um, I'll get into that later. But, um, yeah, so I'd just come home and play and play until dinner. I'd play for three, four hours after school and not do homework. Because I just, like, it was part of me not wanting to be in school. And then, like, part of me just being, like, so obsessed with something that I can like rise to the top with and like be unique and really express myself in a way that's super healthy Mm -hmm. that like I don't know I became obsessed with it I used to just my my phone background was yo-yos my Facebook is just like my Facebook cover photo and profile picture at one point was yo-yos and all I would post is yo-yos I would say happy birthday to like every sponsored yo-yoer on their Facebook wall for like two years straight it was it was crazy i was such a grom for yo-yos but i loved it i, was, I thought it was the coolest thing ever well and, and that's like you gotta love that too right i know that i think <laughs> as we get older in kendama we look down on on that like grommy culture but at the yeah. same time that grommy culture actually no. pushes us and inspires us and Absolutely. makes us work harder and so shout out to all the groms out there that hustle and grind and push because you guys are the ones that keep the game elevated to where it is. So don't, don't go so hard Absolutely. on the groms, guys. Let them Absolutely. be grommy. They'll grow up. Like be, like, be hard on the groms when it's like when, when the groms need to be like, when, the, yeah. when they need to chill. But yeah. I wouldn't even, I think it's just misplaced love again because it's yeah. like they don't, they don't know how to express. Like they're so excited to like finally see you in person and like hang out with you that they're just, yeah. it's weird. Well, I think, I think I part of it I love too, it. I think it's cool. Yeah, totally. And and I think part of it too is the pros and stuff in Kendama mm-hmm. don't see themselves as we, like, for the most part, I think pros in no. general in Kendama don't elevate themselves that high. And so whenever anyone kind of groms up to them, it just feels weird because you're like, I play ball some in the do. cup. Come on, come on. Some <laughs> do. Some, some definitely want to take that stance and be like, yeah. all high up here. I, but I, I think, I think at the end of the day, we all, we all stand outside the Naco Hotel and like play Dom, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I was, 2018, I was playing Ken with Ben Harold and why? Yeah. So like, yeah. and they're just people, they're just regular people. Yeah, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think Grom, the Groms oftentimes, and if, those of you who don't know what a Grom is, uh, I don't even know if I have a great definition of what a Grom is, but a, you just kind of know a Grom when you see a Grom, you know? It's like someone, someone who, yeah, I don't even, I don't have words for it. But regardless, uh, what I, what I would say is a lot of those those individuals who are very grommy in nature yeah. uh, generally will lose a lot of that when they come to an event and meet people in real life in Kanama because they realize it's not that big of a deal. It's yeah. we all play ball in a cup. We're all just trying to put a ball on a spike. And that's just what it is. Yeah. And we're having fun doing it with other people. And, and yeah. it's more of a community than a competition. And that's what I've I've learned to love about Kanama more than anything. Yeah, my um, my first experience, like, being really grommy and then like learning from that is i walk into the hotel in 2018 and i see jacob Lowe. crazy that like i was tweaking about meeting him and now he's like my rival that's it's hilarious but um he um he's like hey man what's up i'm like you're jacob Lowe. like i follow you he's like yeah man (laughs) 
I'm like, see you later, dude. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he I went to go find that. the lamppost to film yeah. under. <laughs> and I exactly with a pitch black background. Yeah, some pinch drinking. Um, and then I learned from that experience, like he's he's just as nervous to like say the right thing to me as I am to say the right thing to him. So we're on an equal playing field. And yeah, and and it's like people like that are very accepting and loving of people who want to meet new people. Yeah. So yeah. there should be no shame in coming to an event and walking up to me and being like, you're awesome. Let's hang out. I would be like, <laughs> you're, you're awesome. Let's hang out. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone who plays ball in the cup is pretty cool in my books. Okay. So, okay. You're playing, you're playing yo-yo. Uh, you're playing it all the way up until you're about 15. And then all of a sudden this wooden ball in the cup, yo-yo looking thing rolls into your life. And, <laughs> and how does that take place? What happens there? Yeah, so I stopped. I actually stopped yo-yoing for a while. I stopped after competing in 2014. I stopped taking it seriously. So 2014, 2015, 16, like those years are like two, three years of me just like picking it up here and, here and there and doing the same tricks and just kind of having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I go to summer camp with my friend Dylan Volts and Ethan again. Ethan brings a... It's a, it's a sweet, all beach. It's, it's the shape before the shape before prime. Oh, it's a very OG shape. Very like he got it off his friend for 10 bucks. And he's like, oh, this is cool. It's another skill toy that I'm going to get good at. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I, this one's mine. <laughs> so I'm playing it. I play it more than him at that camp for the two weeks that we're there. I end up beating it so bad that the whole tama is covered with spike marks it looks like i've been yeah. it looks like josh kim's tama from 2019 yeah. <laughs> was, um, austin donovan was uh, asking down in the chat was it the focus shape was that the shape yes it was it, oh, it, it was definitely guy. a focus yeah it was a it was a sweet <laughs> beach focus oh my goodness that's crazy that's okay, so, so old yeah so you okay you picked up this beach beach 10 Tama yep. from Sweets that your buddy Ethan brought to camp and you just yep. snuck that thing out of his bag and you were honing that thing in for um, him. Every single day, the first moment I picked that thing up and landed Big Cup, it was it, over, done, obsessed. I, yeah. I thought yo-yoing went from the coolest thing to the dumbest thing. And I was like, Kendama is the greatest thing. I've at iPhones, Steve Jobs, who's that? Kendama. Like, Kendama <laughs> is it, is all I need. So I what what do you spent, think was different about it for you? Like why why was that the case? The fact that anybody can do it. The fact that I picked it up and getting a ball on it like it sounds it sounds so like it sounds so simple. But the first time you get big cup and someone's like, "Yes, that's yeah, good job." Mm -hmm. More oh. real love than a lot of other things in my opinion. Because it's, yeah, it's such pure happiness that you're like pushing yourself, even if it's in a simple way as I got a ball on a side cup or the base cup, you're pushing yourself. And it's, it's just, I don't know. It's cool. And you didn't find that same sort of craving or same sort of satisfaction playing yo-yo. Like what, no. what was different with yo-yo? Why wasn't it that for you? Because, because I feel like with yo-yo, everything's already laid out for you. So Oh, this is so hard to explain. So for yo-yoing, it's it's more about where you can go and how complicated it can get and how smooth you can make it look. And kendama is more about um, how difficult things are. It's more of like, mm. it's more of an upward progression. And then yo-yo is more of like, once you're at a certain point, you just kind of have to put things together and it gets kind of boring. So it's sideways progression. In my opinion, I could be, mm -hmm. this is just for me. I found that it was very, I plateaued, got bored and never progressed. No matter how hard I like practice with yo-yo, but with Kendama, I found as though, not to mention it was more fun, just basic you on just a low level. I just found it more fun. And I felt like there was always something new. I was like, okay, cool, bird. Wait, I can balance it on the other side. That's small bird. And then wait, handle it mm -hmm. just it it blew my mind. There is there sense. is there is something intuitive about Kendama when you look at it, you can begin to see it with your eyes. Whereas like with yo yo, I think for me, the only way that I could learn yo yo is if I had someone who already had done it with me showing me the different moves because it's not intuitive to me. 
it it's a really frustrating game to me because I just throw things into knots and I'm whipping things around and I don't really understand the mechanics yeah. of it. And it's not visually, it, at least for me, I found it really hard to visualize what I'm doing. But with Kendama, you're like, okay, every, it's a very clear picture. If I want this to go yeah. onto the other side, I can see how that would look and in, yeah. in the way that it would move to get there. I can't do that with Kendama. Or with, uh, I completely with agree. I completely agree. And not to say that that's, not to say that that's dumbing down visualizing Not a trick because you can see it. It's just, it's a different way to visualize a trick. It's a different trick. It's a different skill toy. Absolutely. Same thing with like devil sticks. It's, it's different. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yeah. it's, I think because of Kendama's stop motion uh, capabilities, it's like you can stop a trick and show it. Whereas yeah. yo-yo, it's always in motion. It's so yeah. hard to slow down and break things down to learn it. Whereas Kendama, you can like break each indiv individual element of a trick down into its core pieces and then begin to construct it in your mind. Yeah. So I think it is Absolutely. just more intuitive that way. But I feel cool. like, I feel as though, if I can put it into musical terms, I feel as though yo-yoing is like creating an album. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. creating so many different pieces to create one... Um, sonic like beautiful piece which is a freestyle which is where you're competing you have three minutes in finals of world you're up there yo-yoing to a song for three minutes it, it's nerve-wracking to me but um you have to create a piece you have to create an art piece it's visual art yeah whereas kendama is like that new jack harlow song or like that new whatever song it's like oh right. that trick was sick i want to watch that a hundred times right yeah. yeah it's more about the banger and and yo-yo is more about the flow in some regards and then there's a bit of a hybrid in between those two that i've seen as well in the kanama world where you have like flow style kanama which is more like the freestyle runs but that's even molded and shaped into a totally different way of doing freestyle than it did start originally back you know 10 years ago where it was a yo-yo style of flow in freestyle now we have tech freestyle we have all these different things and i imagine in my, my thought is is we're gonna see in maybe five to seven years like 1a kanama 2a kanama 3a kanama in the same way that we're gonna that yo -Yo had it and there's oh, gonna be different gonna types of freestyle about that. yeah, yeah maybe... i was gonna say something about that that is i'm so glad you brought that up i 3a kanama if if people start to compete with two kandamas i it, this is the coolest thing in the world cool i think I that's think the hardest thing in the world someone just needs to start paving that way more than just easy you know, like EG is yeah. like the only one doing that right now yeah. where he, and, and I think the guy that he also does, I can't remember the, the guy he also uh, freestyles with all the time for his performances, but he I does like the, the well. two Kens and the one Tama and he's doing such cool stuff with it. And it's like, okay, that's a different style of Kanama that nobody else is even touching right now. Yeah. I want to see it. EG see is, it. Uh, he's performance Kanama to the max. He is a yeah. cardio master. That man. Yeah, EG and uh, Soma as well. Like Soma's big into that too. I think we're going to enter in a new wave of Kendama in a couple of years here with different competitive styles. And we're going to break so out of the like, oh, we only do freestyle and we only do open division. It, it's going to change a lot soon, I think. Absolutely. That's, that's my, my, my hypothesis. Your hypotenuse. <laughs> my, it's my <laughs> hippopotamus. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Okay. You, you got into Dama, you're playing on this beach, uh, this beach focus from Sweets. Where did it start escalating for you? Did you go home, buy one right away? What did that look like? I landed around the world within like nine or 10 days. Around the world is, no, around USA, big, Europe, small base spike. With right? earth turns. That's around the oh, world. No. Big, small base spike is around the world. Around the world. Okay. I was right first. Sorry. Wow. That, that's crazy. I, I yeah. And you're a pro. <laughs> I, no, I'm not pro yet. I'm not pro yet. Uh, yeah. I haven't no, he's just sponsored. What does he know? <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, I landed that within my first two weeks. And it was that, like, getting there from, like, barely being able to do big cup, big, small base spike. Yeah. Just was, was great. And then I told him I lost it. He's like, where's my dom? I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> You're a thief. That, yeah, I'm, I'm exposing myself right now. I don't care. I'll buy him. I'll buy Ethan, him. Ethan, come at him. Come at me, Ethan. Um, but I, I stole it, and then I took it home, and I beat it to shreds, and then the string broke. I didn't know how to replace the string, and then I had my mom buy me a Turner Thorn, uh, like one of the last ones in stock, one of the cherry okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. dark blue mods, the shark mods. yeah. They were like barely in stock, and then oh, I got and one. so that was your that was your first owned Dama that yeah. you didn't steal from someone. Nope, 
That was my first own Dama. My first Dama I stole. That's, that's the <laughs> beginning of my career. <laughs> that's awesome. Did you ever give it back to Ethan or do you still own that Dama by chance? I do not own that Dama. I think I burned it. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, I did not respect keeping your first Dama. I didn't think it would be that crucial to my life until, until later on. <laughs> All right. Conf confession time, Joe. How many other Damas have you stolen since then? From people? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. I haven't stolen a, a Dama. <laughs> <laughs> from people? Not many. Small no, children, but there was, lots. There, there, <laughs> from young babies, millions. All of them. What's a baby going to do with a Kandama? <laughs> what, I you can't can big cup? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We don't have Kandamas for babies yet. <laughs> but um, <laughs> freaking, um, there, there was a time at Beast of the East where I think – I think the homie Carlos thought I was stealing his craft because I found it in my, he was like, where's my craft? And I was all of us like looking for it and it was in my bag. And I was like, yo, he was like, were you trying to steal it? I'm like, dude, I don't know where, I don't know how it got here. <laughs> I don't know. You just like start pulling crazy. out dogs out your bag. They're like, people, people show like, up at events. I was like, like, there's chromes. It's all chromes, man. I don't play shapes, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. B people who show up to events that Joe's at and get their moms to like <laughs> sew on their names onto their kandamas so Joe can't steal them. It's like going to it's going to summer camp. It's like your mom's putting your name on the inside <laughs> of your underwear, but on the, on your kandama because they heard on your I heard that Nelson kid is going to be at this camp. I heard that Joe Nelson spells his first name with three E's and he steals damas <laughs> like a loser. Can't have my kids <laughs> hanging out with that guy. <laughs> Don't show up to Chrome Jams. Your damas will leave. <laughs> oh man oh, that, that's hilarious but yeah the <laughs> the turner thorn turner thorn cherry mod i learned so many tricks on that dama that's oh, that's crazy so okay so you you picked it up in, at 15 you're in high school were you that kid that played in high school did it go big in high school for you at your school no no, no. absolutely not the opposite i got made fun of a lot did you <laughs> yes absolutely what did they say uh let's rehash I, the past the things that I can repeat, um, <laughs> it's stupid, it's pointless, like, that won't bring you anywhere, like, mm. what are you trying to do with that? Like, literally just put, go out, like, go outside, kid. The people say go outside to me, a Kendama player. And they're just like, do you, un do you not understand I'm in my backyard five hours a day? Yeah. <laughs> but, and then yeah, just stupid, stupid things that they didn't understand. They, they didn't understand Kendama, so they'd be like, yeah, that's dumb. Go play video games like the rest of us. Yeah, go play some Skyrim. Come on, nah. you, can, you can mod it out. You know, whatever. Great game, great game, but no, nah, not not as good as Kanama. Not as good. Very good, Bethesda. Very but good. Not not quite good enough. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, man. Shout out to all the people who grinded through that season of life where Kanama yeah. was looked at as like a a dumb thing. For yeah. those of you that put on for Dama, you know, Joe, you you included in that that just kept playing regardless of what people said. Like, shout out to you, because. You know, so many of us now feel more culturally accepted playing the game because yeah. of people like you who grinded through all the crap that people gave you, you know? So, for real. Man, like, it's, it's, it's so legit. And sh another thing is, shout out to the people who play Konama alone. Like, who, yes. have, who, have, who, who have no one around them. For real. That's, that's the love. Like, that's the real love. Right yeah, there. man, I, I think of Max Angel every time I think of that, because Max yeah. played by himself for basically 10 years. <sighs> Nobody really knew him. He, like, participated on the forums a bit. He wrote a blog on Cafe Kanama, had him on the review talking about it. It was like, man, I could never do that. I am such an extroverted, people-dependent person that I would have given up Kendama if I had no approval from anyone years ago. Like, I wouldn't have made it hardly anywhere. Yeah, that's – I didn't know that. That's yeah. insane. That's yeah, so he's incredible. Nuts. And he's, oh my, he's so good. <laughs> yeah, shout, shout out to him getting sponsored by Terra too. Oh, what a it's, beauty. It's insane. Like for me, my favorite players like make me laugh when I like, when people say their names, I think of their clips and their clips like yeah. get me so stoked that I laugh. His, he freaking did, what was it? Locked Gunslinger, Pinch Back pinch, to Locked back to, Gunslinger. Yeah. Stop. That's Absolutely. Oh Absolutely my goodness. Insane. But yeah, shout out. That's that's crazy. Yeah, shout out to all the people out there that just grind on Kendama and make it what yeah. it is today. Okay, we'll so we'll rad. take a break here in a in a couple seconds, uh, and we'll we'll answer some questions from the chat, and then we're gonna jump into a little bit more of the modern story, your sponsorship with Chrome's and whatever the heck PDOX is. I've seen this <laughs> PDOX thing for a while. Nobody, what 
who, who knows? We're going to find out. Uh, and maybe Sunday, talk a little bit about that and yeah. competition and stuff. But catch me up a little bit to, you know, MK018, that early grind. What was that like for you? Did you go to other events? What kept you going? So um, the two other events that, that I went to around that time, I forget the timing. So if Austin knows better, please put it here in the comments. But I went to, um, I went to Beast of the East 4. It was my first ever Kendama event besides there was a, there was a ramen shop uh, competition, like this mini comp, super small. I placed third at that. That was my first ever appearance at like a competition. That's anywhere. crazy. Did, so you placed third at your first event. Did you think that you were good at Kendama going to that event? Like, were you confident no. in yourself? No, absolutely You didn't not. have the same level <laughs> of confidence when you went to MK18. No. I'm like, I'm gonna go claim some souls on this yeah. one. No, yeah. Um, my first ever event, I was, uh, I was super hard on myself. That's with me. I don't think there's an in between right now. It's either like, it's either like I'm hard on myself or I'm like, I'm about it. Like I'm on the grind, like I'm happy. So with that competition, I placed third, um, to, to tie for third. I think it was against Austin, uh, to tie Ooh. or beat him to tie or beat him. I got this clutch jug spike. Okay. Was, I, I slid I slid into it and I got on my knees and I like, spiked it right in front of the three kids that were in the front. They were like, what? Super sick. And then never went to another competition until Beast of the East that summer. Beast of the East 4. Um, it was at Port Jefferson um, yeah. in New York. And I show up um, by myself. I meet Russ, Austin, Jaden. The whole East Coast scene was there and I double podium. I win open entry style. Okay, you won them yeah. both. Yes, sir. So then at that point, did you realize like, okay, maybe I'm actually pretty good at this thing. And, and that was that a big moment for you? Or did you not uh, take that yeah. seriously? Yeah, no, that was, um, that was, I think, not my favorite competition to date, but that was definitely the most meaningful win. Yeah. Yeah, Easy. that was my first comp. I double podiumed. I beat, um, I beat a lot of really good players. I beat John John. I beat Vincent, who was, uh, he was on Yumu. At the time, I beat – I don't think I had to play Josh Kim. I had to play Josh Kim in freestyle, and I had to play mm -hmm. Chris Schneider in freestyle. Funny story about the finals round of freestyle, I tried to backflip. <laughs> I fell. Like physically backflip. Like you <laughs> Physically, do yeah. Like, like, like toss my – put my Dama down and backflip, and I did not land it. <laughs> <laughs> the, my boy's trying to bring parkour into freestyle. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't know, man. I I didn't have anything, and Chris was this like stringy dude. He was this like string tech dude. Yeah. So I had to I had to do something. So I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> Back to it, man. I, there, there there was a guy. Uh, he had panic D DJ Panic or something like that. Uh, he who used to play Konami or still does. I haven't really Tight. seen much from him. But he, I remember M MKO eighteen. He did some like wild freestyle routine where he put like the cannon between his knees, got on the <laughs> ground and started like jumping over the Tom as he like whipped it under his knees a bunch and stuff. And he was doing That's all these That's so weird... sick. Yeah. It was like, he was playing like a hopscotch or something with Kendama and it was so cool to see, but it was like, is this even Kendama? I don't, I don't know what this is anyway. It was like, <laughs> it's like hopscotch at this point. It's a hopscotch yeah. competition. Yeah. Yeah. Is this jump rope? We, we played some <laughs> double deck. No. Oh man. That that's super cool. So you took that win. You start realizing, like, okay, maybe I'm pretty good at this thing. Start playing. Yeah. And then was that when you like started putting on the grind to get sponsored, or did you care at that point? Were you looking for yeah. that? Yes. That competition, I went home and like, I kind of just sat with myself and I was like, huh, like, I really went out there and won all this stuff today. Like, maybe this could be something that I am good at that I do excel at, not for the monetary gain like what I could gain, but mm -hmm. like where I could go. You know what I'm saying? Like right. how high I could get amongst these people like Bonds and Nick G and all, all these people who are mm -hmm. all like established already. Let's see how far I can go to compete with them. Yeah. So I did, I, I repped, so I started to rep sweets at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy for like a few weeks. And then I repped grain theory heavy and then through 28 and then after 28 um i bought a beams i bought a chrome beams and it was the greatest kanama i ever played with in my life I, yeah i think that was one of the best kanamas of its generation like at the time when that kanama came out i think it was probably hands down one of the most played kanamas 
and one of the most competitively represented dramas that in terms that of like, happened. it was just like, everybody was playing it. It was such a good one. Did you get the red or the blue? Oh, yes, absolutely. I do have it. Yeah, the red. Okay, the red one. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Doesn't I Doesn't look that buddies. bad. Yeah, that, that looks like it's still fresh. You should go go to next comp with that. Play, play that one. <laughs> yeah. That's Dude, that, that, for real though, that Dama was so good at its time. One of my best friends, uh, Sean, Sean so Dama good. on Instagram, he had one. And I like was all, so I wasn't, I played this lay dog. Like I'm, this is, this is one of my OG Damas. This is a new, new version of it, but I had the original. The EG. Like, yeah, the EG, literally one yeah. of my favorite Damas of all time. So good. Uh, and, and I was so resistant to abandon this and get one of the beams. And then my buddy got one. They were sold out for forever. I've never bought one since, but I like, it was sold out. I played his. I was like, man, I regret not get, getting one of these because it's now become an iconic Dama. It's like the, yeah. it's like the batch one Christian Frazier of its time. Yeah. Absolutely. Seriously. It it was the staple of that. It wasn't the staple. It was one of the top tier Kandamas yeah. at that time, for sure. Absolutely. Hands and down. I, I just, I, I played the crap out of it. Um, I didn't really tap at that time. I did a lot of uh, inward looters and Ken flips. Yeah. I, I didn't really make a lot of contact with the Tama like that, but my hands yeah. were hurting, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So you, you, you set out on the grind to get sponsored how did you how did you approach that what did that mean for you what did what did that change about how you were playing kendama and the way that you were showing off yourself in order to achieve that because that wasn't a simple grind for you that was years in the no. making so what yeah. was your strategy did you have one um yeah so my strategy is actually comes from my dad a lot he him and i spoke and i i talked to him and i'm like look i really want to dedicate time and effort into this kendama thing and, and he's like yeah i'll support you like I'm down to help mm. you. I'm down to financially support you and things like that. So he sat me down and said, look, like, no matter how far you go, it doesn't matter unless you're truly being you, unless you did it. And he emphasized you, like he pointed at me. Yeah. So my whole thing this entire time is I want to get, I want to be pro my own way. I want to grind my way. I want to film my videos. I want to use my music. I'm going to use my tricks. I wanted to do it. I don't want to do what anyone else does. Cause I feel like, I feel like a lot of people can, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people can be tap Lord. A lot of people can be Ken flip Lord and get sponsored and get a mod. But I feel like this grind to me is like just a personal goal and it's a personal vendetta, mm -hmm. not really a vendetta, but like it's a personal longing that I've, I've wanted for so long. And it's like, it's just yeah. a dream for me as a kid being like, yo, my face can be on a kendama. That's sick. I don't care about the money. Like I don't need royalties. Yeah. Like that. I don't even want to take royalties. I just want to be able to hand kids in my hometown a kendama with my face on it. That's all that matters to me. Man, it's so for anyone listening in, go back, rewind 30 seconds, go listen to that one more time because you guys need to hear that. You don't want to be pro someone else's way. A, yeah. because you're going you're gonna to have this entire imposter syndrome living over your life because you're trying to be someone else that you're not. Yeah. Spend the time developing your own self, who you want to be, and allow a company to come into your life and say, hey, I want to sponsor Joe. I don't want to sponsor Joe's tricks. I want to sponsor Joe because of who he is, the play style he has, the culture he's developed, all these things. That's what you want as a player when getting sponsored because otherwise you're going to feel like a fraud the whole time. I know I, I would. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like at this point where we are in the community, we're looking for more ambassadors for Kendama to sponsor. You know what I'm saying? We need people who not only slay, but like are the person we want to represent Kendama. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And people need to, people need to figure that out. We're, we're, we're trying to make that, make that very evident on the brew view, you know, trying to preach about what, what sponsorship actually is, you know, the culture can not, we try to get into that. It's not about the tricks. I, I think tricks are important. I think the can, all that stuff is important, but I think that that is takes backseat to a lot of the other things that people need to recognize in the Kanama community, which is the culture of it, the people, the style, the way we portray the game we love, all that matters probably more than whether or not you can do more taps than me or that other guy. Yeah. I, that stuff is, I don't know. It just bores me. Anyways. Yeah. And it's Anyways. like, look, like people can, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I can go I don't rant on that forever. for a long, <laughs> <Yeah>. long time. <laughs> I, 
There is probably a document of conversations that is hours long of chats on the review with players who wow. are sponsored. It's just like making it clear of what it actually is and what it isn't. And yeah. I don't know, I still see it all the time. Like, and it kind of goes back to the Grom conversation that we were having. It's just like a misunderstanding of what it means to be sponsored. It's also a misunderstanding of what people think sponsorship is and not realizing what it is from a brand standpoint. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, like my full-time job is I oversee influencer marketing. Like I do influencer marketing. I pay people to do sponsored posts for us. I, you know, spend thousands of dollars on this. Right. Absolutely. And, and people don't recognize like what are brands actually looking for? If you think yeah. that a brand is looking for someone who can just hit the hardest tricks, that's actually not really what they're looking for. They're looking for people of influence, people who can represent them well, show yeah. their brand off and bring more people in because it's at, at the end of the day, it's a bit of an economics game and you need to have yeah. people that can portray you well and yeah. represent you well and come to you through that person. That's why you choose yeah. to sponsor someone. I think about it like buying a car almost. It's like the first thing that attracts you to that car. Okay, cool. That's how it looks. Your tricks. Boom. That's the, that's the baseline level is, is your tricks. And then it's like, okay, how does it drive? How does it fit in with the rest of our team? How do they, how do they act when no one's looking and they need to represent Chrome in a manner that, or any company, I'm just yeah. speaking for me. When no one's looking, how are you going to re represent Chrome in that way? Yeah. And then the final thing is like, if you get along with everyone yeah. and then that's it. That's, but your yeah. tricks are, that's the first thing that people see. And then we look at it. Cool. And then we go into like, are you like this kind yeah. of person or that kind of person? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You need to, you need to have a baseline of getting attention, right? You need, you need to be able to bring people in, but there's a way to do that. And, and you got to yeah. keep people in and keep them engaged with you anyways. But I, I, I love this rant, but I've had it so many times now. <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. I'm, I'm just saying things everyone else is saying. <laughs> All right, let's hit up some of these questions. Let's see yes. how many of these questions are from the Groms or not today. We got a couple from it. the post uh, that we'll hit up first. Uh, one from one of my favorite people in the Konami community, as always, uh, Patreon subscriber, Brett Walters wants to know, yes. this is Boston W on Instagram. Make sure you guys yeah. go follow him. He does so much for the community. Uh, what is your hair care routine? He wants to know. <laughs> is it a, I don't know what it is, but in the Konami community, we, we're all about knowing people's hair care. Cool. I've been wearing a hat all day, but I yeah, just got haircut. Pretty chill. Um, my hair care routine is I I actually do have a hair care routine, which is cool. Okay. I shampoo every other day and I condition daily. Okay. I, yeah, I don't just, do that. Yeah. And anything that's not like Kirkland or dollar value, I don't really care what it is. I'm, so you, I'm not you like bougie stuff. with my shoes. Yeah, I'm not bougie with my shampoos as long as it doesn't say like, as long as it doesn't have certain chemicals in it, you can spend six bucks and get great shampoo. You don't need to be okay. all like head and shoulder. I've spent, I spent 23 <laughs> on my shampoo and I spent 35 on my condition. Like you're cool. No. Yeah. The, do you remember, I don't know if it ever hit you, but I like grew up in, in Southern Alberta in, in Sask, uh, like prairie lands, lots of, mm -hmm. you know, you know, lots of horse people and stuff. And yeah. they would always buy this shampoo. I don't remember what it was called, but it came in a purple container. It was like purple shampoo. And they would rave about this stuff. Like it was the best. And it's horse shampoo, but they would use it. Is on it mane hair. and tail? Is yeah, mane and tail. tail. Mane and Absolutely. tail. That's the one. Absolutely, and people use yeah. that like it's, like it's, I don't know. I could never <laughs> get behind it, but people, people were always on that stuff. It's great. It's, it's great shampoo. My mom Do you use uses it. it. Okay. My mother uses it. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Or mane she, and tail. Or she did before. Something like that. I don't ask her about her <laughs> shampoo needs weekly. I... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got a question here from Chan the Man 52. Chan is on some. Chan, way, dude. Oh my God. He is so good. Wait, bro. He's so good. Pinch, late sling, bird. Yeah. Stop. Go make sure you guys are following Chan the Man 52 on Instagram. Uh, he, he says, I always ask people this, but what is your least favorite mode of transportation? Ugh, dude, I would rather. Um, I would rather drink week old ice cold coffee than ride the subway. You don't York. like the subway? No. Dude, I want to ride the subway in New York so bad. I've never done it. I might like, Let's so go. Here, I, I, I would do it. Just, I don't know if I'd love it long term, but like just to do it once, I want to do it, you yeah. know? And I feel it's like cool. it's a thing that you just have to do once in your life. So I'm coming, I'm going to, I'll, yeah. I'll be there. We'll do it. <laughs> it's an experience. I like to say it's an experience for tourists. It's a hassle for locals. 
Yeah. Do you, have you guys ever done Grand Central Station jams? Like, is that a thing? We got, we got kicked out because we had so many people in 2020. Okay. Kicked out. So we no got more. kicked out. Like, yeah, can't go we back got now. Going 2019 into 2020. No, we can go back. It's just that night. We had so many people that we were blocking a freaking walkway. And they were like, yeah, y'all got to go. Oh, man. <laughs> and we ended up going to this. We ended up going to this spot. It was an ice rink, grass, like ground, and then steps. And it was yeah. like, yep, this is even better. What? Why were we there? Wow. That's so cool. That, man, I want to come and do a jam in Grand Central Station. So when I come to New York and I come, come hang out come. with the, the, the East Coast Dama Squad, we got to do it. Grand Central Station. I want it. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely try that. We can try Washington Square Park. That's the, I don't know if you've ever seen where that's at. That's the park with the big over arch overhang with the, oh, with, yeah, the yeah, yeah. with the people out of stone. We can do it there. Central Park, Bryant Park there, is very good. There's a, there's a like, um, uh, what did they call that? Uh, like if you walk through under the archway without paying attention or don't notice it, there's like bad stuff will happen or something like that. I, I oh, heard really? This. Is this a, re is this a, a real superstition no that people have? I don't Probably. know. Probably. I've heard Everybody's this, got some, everybody's got some <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We got, we got a question here from Julian AD underscore yes. on Instagram. He wants to know, Absolutely. actually, I'll ask the question and remind me to come back to it, but let's use this question to segue into a conversation afterwards. He wants to know about PDOX 18. Is it a brand, a Dama crew or both? Um, right let's that save that. Let's save that. We'll come back to that. Julian, we will come back to your question because that's a good one. And we're going to be talking about that in the second half of our combo here. Got it. All right. Let's check what we got from the chat here today. Uh, we got a question from Austin Donovan. Yes. Uh, outside. Now, we've talked a little bit about this already. So maybe if there's anything outside of Yo-Yo, Don Austin Donovan wants to know, any hobbies prior to Kendama that helped your progression be exponential? Did soccer. you do anything outside of? Okay. Soccer. Yeah, I played I played soccer from second grade to my junior year of high school. Okay, and how did I you see soccer, soccer like helping Kendama? Soccer helps it. It's um, I don't think it literally translate because it's a different sport. Um, I think the I think the mindset again, just having a champion's mindset, having that hunger to want to be the best version of yourself, not better than everyone else. Because for me, Kanama's all about just pushing myself. Like, I don't care how good the next guy is. I don't care if you can big cup or septuple Ken flip late <laughs> bird. You know what I'm saying? Like, I care about my progression and I care about you loving Kanama. Yeah. That's what it is. yeah. Absolutely. Oh, man. That's sweet. Do you still play soccer? Uh, for fun. Yeah. But I okay. quit. I quit super it was a wild send i quit um i quit soccer my junior year to join the first year of men's volleyball at my okay and yeah, then you gave it dope. up and then were you volleyball uh, kid after that you know bump nope. set spike you know smack just it down kind of guy just, just one, one year, year. I, and then never I went back for to fun either here and there. yeah never went back okay. to either did, did are, are you in college did you go to school after high school I did. I went to two years of community college where I did play for the town. Like I played in okay. rec leagues for soccer yeah. and volleyball, but I never had an organization to really like get into it like that again. Yeah. But, um, okay. but in college, I mainly just focused on Chrome. I mainly focused on getting sponsored by Chrome. It was school, yeah. going home, filming. What, what, did you get made fun of in college as well for Kendama or were, was oh. it, or did people just kind of like let it go and they're like, whatever. Absolutely. But it was less because okay. I feel like, I feel like on a college campus, there's more, especially some, there's so much more just open freedom. You yeah, can do whatever yeah. you want. It's open. People, you know, it's an exploratory season of your life where you're Absolutely. just trying all these things. And people are just like, yeah, that guy does that. You know, and this girl over there, she's doing hoops or something, you know, who knows what she's doing. But, you know, everybody's kind of got their own thing in college and people kind of respect that more, yeah. more so than I think in high school. All right. Uh, it's dope. Stevie, Stevie Dot Smalls wants to know if you have any Kendama tattoos. I do. I just got the kanji right here. Oh, is that uh, kanji for kendama or what does that say? Yes, sir. It says kendama. That was Ken my first. Uh, that was my first arm tattoo. Was that one right there? How, how many tattoos do you have? Three. Four, oh my gosh, I have to count. All right, one, two, three, four. That's my doom piece right there. Yeah. Uh, five, six, seven, and then I have eight, nine. Okay, sick. 
yeah. any any deep symbolism behind any of them that you want to share? If you were to share one of them, yes, I can share uh, the Bigfoot one. That one's cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So my Bigfoot my Bigfoot tattoo is for. Um, it was a. It's kind of a metaphor more than I actually believe in Bigfoot. I do believe in Bigfoot. I think Bigfoot's real, but we can get onto that later. But uh, oh, I want I think to it's, now. I think it's a metaphor. I don't have a lot of evidence. Have, have you seen think, Bigfoot? No, but it's the most. It's it, it's like one of these things is not like the other. You know what I'm saying? It's the most believable out of the mythological creatures. It's like yeah, we're gonna see a Loch Ness monster. Yeah, okay. A unicorn. Okay. A giant hairy man. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> right, okay, but okay, so there's all the conspiracy theorists out there that are all Bigfoot nuts, and they, they like have this like connection to Bigfoot that nobody else has, right? They're like, <laughs> I know he's real, and like I've seen him, all these things. It's like these guys walk and talk like they are in a relationship with Bigfoot, like they walk in the forest and they shout out his name and he shouts back. And it's like, no, you don't. There's <laughs> no way money. that you're just like, <laughs> yeah, it's all for money, it's all a show. But people were like, real. I I know I've seen Bigfoot. No, you don't. shut up. That's all I should. Look at this pixelated photo that looks like yeah. it came from 10 years ago. You know, you <laughs> I took this? it last week on my I iPhone took, 11. I Big took foot. this picture of Bigfoot. There he is. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. um, not, but, but it's more of a metaphor for believing in the impossible and that anything that you want to be real can be. Okay. Yeah. You like a... Uh, kind of a symbolism for if you if you you know like just grind push for it it's real yeah. you can make it real yeah so bigfoot i'm coming for you now that bigfoot. i'm on chrome i'm you, that's my next step is bigfoot well you know that bigfoot's actually one of our most active listeners on the show it's always in the comment section shout you just out. haven't seen it shout out bigfoot man shout out the homie i'm coming for you Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Brett Walters, Patreon sub, wants to know, what trick did you learn that made you realize you were developing a personal play style? Um, when I started my grind for late goons, I, I watched Fringe Case. Fringe Case changed my life. We can, we can get to that if we have to address that later, like on the story of Chrome. But um, late goons, definitely. I'll talk a little bit about that now. Late goons, because I, I've been told, I don't think I do them differently than Ben, but I've been told that I do them differently and that my late goons look different than a lot of other people. So mm. I just started incorporating those into tricks and they've become one of my favorite tricks. You can use them anywhere at any time and make a trick sick. So, yeah. 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 Uh, dude, I, I haven't figured them out. What's okay. If you could give me a, a breakdown of like the pointers that I need to be good at late kins or late goons, because I've never landed one, like literally I've landed one yeah. to like a jug to lighthouse, but I've never done a straight late goon to spike. I, it doesn't click for me. And I'm big on string flow. Like I love mm -hmm. classic string flow, but the new gen string tech, I, I can't figure it out. I can't do string pinches. I can't do late goons. I'm bad at them. Yeah. So I say the three things uh, for late goons are positioning height, and flick it's not a toss i think it's more of a flick so positioning is you always want when you're late gooning it depends from where you're late gooning from i'll give a really really quick tutorial on late goons yeah so from plane no matter where you start you always want spike facing the back end of the tama because that's when you're sending the late goon into the circle of rotation it stays the smoothest so that's right. your positioning you always want a late goon as close to this as possible, it's never going to be perfect. You might late goon here and have to push it a little bit, and it might be wobbly. But try to get it, try to get that as clean as possible. Um, the second thing is height, because I see people, I see people late gooning like down here, and they're like, "Why can't I get it?" Right. Um, so because you, you don't give yourself enough time to land it. My my thing is, I want it how I like them is between my eyes and my chest. So in this okay. little area right here is where I throw it up and begin my late goon. So that way I can catch it right in did front. You just did that like it was so casual. That actually is so crazy. It's like, yeah, you just a boop, boop. <laughs> oh, I almost laced. And then the third thing is the flick. So when you do that, when you have the positioning and the height right, bam, bam, it's not a full arm toss because then you you're just... going to lift and you're letting go here, which is halfway through the late goon. Right, and then you have to pull your arm all the way down to try and catch, and you're, Absolutely. you're not in a good position for it. That makes sense. So you want to think about it as the Ken and Tama are making a circle, a full circle. And you just, you literally just toss the Ken into the circle. And the Kendama does the rest of the work. 
And then you just catch Ken, and the tom will flip right and on. If, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and it floats. So yeah. with with those three things are my that's my little tutorial on Lake Goons. I can get oh. I can literally talk about that for two hours, but. All right. Yeah. Well, you'll have to make like a fringe case breakdown or or the behind the scenes of fringe case Joe Nelson's edition. <laughs> oh, dude, I am. I do not have the authority to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody does. Ben Ben stands high and mighty above. Above us all in that Above category. us all. <laughs> all right, floating, ben, ben, floating, sitting, crisscross applesauce. Yeah, well, who is that guy? Six, six dogs over yeah, his shoulders. Dude, I bet you his dogs can like goon better than most people. Oh, all of all the dogs he comes in contact with are late goon masters. <laughs> they can hit every trick in Fringe Case, if you didn't know. <laughs> they, they all have their own stools <laughs> that they do tricks on? Yeah, they have doggy stools. They're like little smaller than the Ben stool. <laughs> <laughs> all right benjamin That's underscore awesome. v4 uh do you view kendama as a sport or a hobby and why i i i what does it matter how i view it <laughs> to be honest with you i think it's i think it's a sport why why do we want it to be a sport if yeah that's a good question to, sport, to ask that i think it's a skill toy i think i think sports and skill toys are different skill toys are focused on the individual like there's some sports like fighting golf tennis that are focused mm -hmm. but mainly team sports are about it could be considered a sport, whatever you want it to be. I personally consider it a skill toy because of you're playing with a toy and you're not really like using a team or scoring mm -hmm. a goal. You're, you're, you're practicing to get better at a toy. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I guess it's a lane camp. of sports. It's, it's a lane of sports. For sure. Yeah. I think most comparably it's like, do you, it's like skateboarding. Skateboarding is a sport, but it's also like a, a type of sport that isn't quite a standard sport. Yeah. You know, it's like, a, it's, it's an X game style. It's like its own category under the, the art of physical activity. <laughs> yeah. And, and Kendama kind of has its own avenue and it might, you could call it a sport. I, th I think I agree with you though. Yeah. I don't know if I personally call Kendama a sport. I, I typically the, would call it a game yeah. or a skill toy. Yeah. I see these answers right here. Someone said a meditation device oh the homie said it um i agree to a certain extent sometimes i get very pissed off yeah it's not always meditative definitely not always meditative you can make it if you want it to be though and then somebody said it's self-discipline i think that's definitely the best way to describe yeah. it as a self-discipline it's like a martial art it's more yeah. relatable to a martial art than it is to a sport yeah i think that i think that's very yeah. accurate absolutely Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's hit one or two more of these questions. We'll save some for the end. And then uh, let's jump into the whole brand side of things and talk the, the multiple brands that you represent. You are more decorated in sponsorships or collabs than so many people out there. It's cool. So, so we're going to dive into so that. Uh, we, we've talked through a couple of these. So I'm just sifting through a few of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a request here from Mardot Dylan, a uh, Joe. Come to the 608 in the summer with Gino? Question mark. I can't tell if that's a demand or a question. So um, you can you can hear it either way. That's the homie, um, and I. That's only two hours away from me. So I will absolutely be there with him. That's my. I love Gino. Shout out Gino for being like one of my best Kendama homies for sure. Yeah. He's the. He is just. Uh, he's he's different. His energy around Kendama like matches mine, and it's yeah. it's so sick. Dude, the guy, yeah. the guy is like the capital of, of not Grom is not the right word, but the guy <laughs> shreds and grinds, yeah. but in all the best ways of what a, yes. he's like king of the Groms in the best of ways. You know, he just oh, hustles. Yeah. He grinds. He's just, he literally, he literally didn't have any other, like, he didn't have any other help besides pure blood, sweat and tears put into Dude, the way he got sponsored. Disgusting. It, absolutely. It if there's like a multiple routes to getting sponsored for sure, you know, from culture, character, having other content, whatever it is, dude, That's that guy, way. that, yeah, he, he took the hardest path possible and showed Absolutely. everybody the bar that you need to meet. If you want to make it at that in that, in that route, you know, especially with a company right now, like soul, who is just killing it. Yeah. Killing right. it. Shout out Chad. Yeah. Shout out. Ch always shout out. Chad. Always. Hey man. Preach it. Okay. Uh, I can know. Kanala underscore underscore Jin Chiriki wants to know, uh, what is your bread and butter last trick to seal a game of Ken? From the Ken Master, what's your kill shot? Tap. Uh, it's going to be pull up, tap, into the lighthouse, jug, late goon, throw, tap, lighthouse. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah we're dead. Can you hit that, like, <laughs> fairly regularly? Give me five tries. 
No, that's that's dumb. I want to see you put that on your story today, uh, and and show us like the minimum amount of tries that it took took you to do it. Okay, one last question, and then oh he oh he's given the did you just hit that right there? A little handed on that last lighthouse. But oh we're my count god! It a I miss seeing that. I, I don't want to the Q and A tool. No, that's fine. <laughs> I had the Q and A tool pulled up, and so I couldn't actually see your screen. I was just looking at the questions. Yeah. I'm gonna have to it rewatch was... that now. I will admit that was slightly handed on that last lighthouse, but everything else is clean and I don't want to try it again. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just going to take my, my belief that you just cheat in general. Ever since yeah. I heard that you steal kanamas from people, <laughs> I'm just going to believe that. <laughs> Please, no, that, that would be such a funny meme that I'm a cheater. That, that'd be so funny. <laughs> that'd be awesome <laughs> okay uh last question then let's jump into the sponsorship side of things matt sabara wants to know favorite chrome kendama question mark oh i can't it's 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 the new one coming i can't put it out you can't say it okay, i what's can't the say one it but you're... i'll say this one for now the chrome gas is the greatest kendama chrome has ever put out to be honest it's maple it's ash maple too good that minimal design tracking yeah. it's, i like the minimal it's, it's, Oh, okay. everything. About yeah, it. they're really so clean. Fire. I am a big fan of those ones. I I thought when they came out, like, what? Why are they called gas mods? Like, what? Why the name gas? Do you know? I think it's because I think it's because someone said they look gas, and that's just okay. Uh, that's it, they're, they're just, <laughs> they just gas. They're yeah, the, they're they are. Uh, they they think a lot over there. They were they they overthink to the point where things become simple. It's so yeah. fire. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, they're super fire. I wanted to pick up one of the, the tan ones. I really like the tan colorway. This off-white yeah, you, one, the cream. Yeah, the off-white. Yeah, they yeah. look super, super sick. I am a big fan of that colorway. I love the simplistic kanamas. I love simplicity in design. I'm not a designer. And so any the more simple, the better it is, by all means for me, because it's, it's just easier for me. Well, I do have one I could mail to you, if you really want one. Hook me up, bro. We'll make Got it you. happen. I'll send so you get my that address, address after the show. I'll Absolutely. hit you with that PayPal for them. Them big shipping costs that I make yeah. fun of every every week. I have week to make a shipment review. soon. I get called. I'm out heading on this. to the post office tomorrow, so we'll get it out. <laughs> I get called out on this like every week by by some of the the longtime listeners of the show. They're like, you you complain about Canadian shipping every week on the review. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's I not do that much. I Is it a do. lot? Well, it depends. Anyways, we for for the sake of the people that will complain again. I'm not going to, I'm not going to rehash the past. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's Brett Walters. He's in the chat. He's making fun there of me he already. Is. He's the one always bringing it up. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. Uh, let's talk about sponsorships. Let's talk about the, the different brands that you're sponsored by. Let's first talk Chrome because Chrome came first and then PDOX then maybe Sunday, or maybe you can correct me there in the Chrome, order of yes, operations. That's, that, that's definitely the order for sure. Okay. Hit me, hit me with the Chrome story. How did that happen? Um, I just decided one day that clip ap after 28 of r really going in with an E1 Roku, I think it was the ice blue or whatever. I was like, yeah, this really isn't worth it. Um, I'm not getting any, uh, like notice. I wasn't getting any right. traction with players. So I was kind of just like, so you, you were do? keen on, yeah. on GT at one point. Yeah, not it, it wasn't because I loved the Damas purely. It was because I felt like I could get along with the team the most. Because right. through the videos, I thought the team looked just like a bunch of homies. So I was like, cool, I, I would love to be a part of that. And then because of the beams and I love me loving that Kanama and then just me loving every Kanama Chrome has come out with since, like especially the pop. The pop changed my life. Mm -hmm. um, I rep Chrome because I love it. It was purely like, okay, I now don't care about the team. What Damas are my favorites? And it's always been them. Always Chrome. Yep. So I repped Chrome and I filmed. I just filmed. I went to those two comps, kept filming. And then there was a, um, there was a competition, Northeast Ken Kendama competition called Neck. That's just funny. Okay. It was up in, uh, it was up in Amesbury, Massachusetts. And, I went up there, took me seven hours with my homie Danny from uh from from New Jersey, and Bonds was there. That was mm -hmm. the first time I met Bonds. We seshed and we played Ken and Who won? I kept like uh he kept winning, of course. Duh. Oh. And so I thought you were he, gonna tell um, me you claimed his soul. Absolutely not. And then I met just like I met the rest of my like really good friends now. 
even my like best friends now I met there. I met mm -hmm. Matt, Matt, uh, Matt Clifford, the artist behind Pete Ox. I right. met Finn, uh, just want to just the, the man, Finn. I met Bonds. I met the Massachusetts homies and I met more of the Connecticut homies. So I really like cemented myself within the East coast by making my way up there and really wanting to meet those people. Mm -hmm. So competed, I won open and I got second in freestyle against Austin. I think me and Austin are now one and one in freestyle because he beat me there and then I beat him at NACO and he was okay. invited. So gang. Austin um, Donovan, come on, man. You we're one and one. It's... On the <laughs> <laughs> we need another excuse to compete at that level again. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, and then I placed really well in front of Bonds. I had an insane freestyle round. Um, I have it up on my gram. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, put that I had in the stories afterwards if you send that to me. Dang, yeah. I had an insane freestyle round. Um, and I placed and then I just kept, well, I went home, kept filming. And then I posted this clip with my first, it was a Chrome Ken, but it was the first clip with a non-Chrome Tama. It was the Decade Mod Tama, Kush. Right. So I was like, I'm going to use this Tama because like, of course. Um, and I played with that setup and I got a DM from Marcus Lander. He was like, yo, dude, like, keep going. Like, just keep playing Chromes. Like, it's, <laughs> it's like, just He's like, put that thing back just, where it just, came from or so just, help me. Yeah. As soon as I posted that, he goes, he goes, oh, we'll repost you. Like, we're going to post you tomorrow. Like, just keep playing Chromes. And I'm like, yeah, uh-huh. For yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, man. And then he, he sent me a picture of him, Rolf, and uh, our homie Tug. And they were all just drinking at the bars. And I was like, nice, let's go. So <laughs> Just sent you a random photo. Yo, check <laughs> out this photo of us hanging yeah. out. It was awesome. They're Don't so you tight. wish you could be here with us? They're so tight. Um, so I kept playing and then kept filming. Nothing really happened until NACO. And then NACO 2019 rolled around. I, myself, Matt Cliff, Russ and Finn were like keychained to each other the whole competition. It was really funny. We literally hung out. We squatted up the whole yeah. time at that competition. We didn't I remember seeing you there, other. but I didn't know those guys at all at that point. Like I, yeah. I was there as well. I don't think I, – I, I doubt you and I ever really interacted in 2019. I don't remember no. interacting with you much. I was judging I, pretty I, much all of 2019. So I just yes, was like were. zoned in on the stage. And I, I have so much water in my room. I just noticed I have a gallon, I have a bottle. That's crazy. Um, but I was literally glued to East Coast that entire trip. So yeah. I was just like doing whatever. And then at that competition, I was I bought a I bought a Fisher headshot mod, and I was playing it, and I'm learning inward tray flips, just, and I'm hitting them. It was cool. Fish comes up. He's like, "Nice mod," and I'm like, "Hey man," and we start chatting. Uh, they hook it up, or Josh Kim. Shout out Josh Kim, uh, gets it hooked up with a Walnut Rolf headshot before I leave. He's like, yo, like take this, Chrome wants you to have it. And I was like, nice, cool. So keep filming. And then it was either October or November. Bonds hits me up while I'm in class. And he goes like, let's have a conversation. And it's really funny. And it's uh, in Bonds fashion. He hits me up at like 10, 11 a.m. And he's like, yo, like call me after class. Like I'll be around. <laughs> it wasn't until like 9 30 that night he's like yo i just wasn't on my phone i'm like all good man he's like are you awake still i'm like yeah i've been shaking all day <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then he asked me to be on the team i was at um i was at my best friend's apartment that night and like every like myself him and two of our homies like they shut up and i took the call and then i hung up i was like thank you so much click Oh, I scream. They're like hugging me. They're like, yeah, dude, let's go. And then, yeah. And then I filmed my announcement and then, yeah. Dude, that's crazy. And so you, that was just after Inigo 19 and you didn't like, get announced like a month until two, yeah. a while later. To battle you were, that, that following year. So it was Jan, like January or something like that where you got announced, yeah. right? And that was the last in-person event, pretty much. Yes, it was. Before anything else really happened. I mean, we, I mean, I hosted an in-person event that, that year, but <laughs> it was very small. It was scale. the last. It was the last before the pause. It was, yeah. It was the last before that, like six, seven month. When was? Yeah. When was your battle? Wasn't that November? Uh, October, 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 October. So like, from like March to July was that like big pause. Yeah. Nothing happened. It's crazy. Yeah. 
And what, it was was that weird for you? Like you got sponsored and then no. you couldn't go to any events no. to show off and like I'd be like, look at me, I'm a, I'm a Chrome player now. No, Instead you're just like <laughs> sliding into people's DMs. Hey, my name's Joe Nelson. I play the Chrome. <laughs> did you know? Hey, hey, just random kid. Hey man, did you know? <laughs> no, but I, I, um, no, but like, to be honest, nothing really changed for me. Cause it was all, it just, it literally just, so imagine, imagine an open field with a fire. And then imagine just raining gasoline on that fire. That's what the Chrome sponsorship did to me. I just, the fire just became so much hotter, so much brighter, so much, yeah, so much more everything. And I was just so hungry mm -hmm. and I just kept filming. Yeah. yeah. And you went deep, like you, you, and, and that, very edits. noticeably, you started putting out edits. And so I wanted to touch on that real quick because yeah. you, you started going into the space of video editing and creating content more than just IG. And I'm going to yeah. always applaud anyone who gets out of IG and posts stuff elsewhere and does other content. Yeah. So congrats, first off, Thank for breaking you. out of the IG world <laughs> and doing that. But did I you have that. editing experience or did you just say like, no, I need to put on for this brand. So I'm going to get a cam. I'm going to start making this happen. Hang out with the people who do it. Yeah, so it's... It's so weird because um, in high school, I was never really a good skater, but um, I would sit around and do typical teenage high school boy stuff and be with my friends and we'd just watch a bunch of skate vids. We watched things like Baker 3. Okay. Um, I never watched skateboarding stuff. vids. I never got into skateboarding. BMX for sure. Down BMX is tight. Biking, absolutely, but never skateboarding. Skateboards scare the crap out of me. Yeah, skateboarding... It, it just felt different and the way it was filmed. I didn't care about the tricks. I cared about the look and like just how the videos came together and, and the feel and the emotion you got from there. It's di skateboarding is different. It's the videos mm -hmm. created around skateboarding are different. And I, I was always interested in becoming the man behind the lens. So my first year in college, I was a film major. Oh, okay. And I was the president of the AV club my senior year. And I was just involved with AV my sophomore and junior year. So I was in AV after school. I was either playing Konama or I was editing stuff just for fun. I had this like, I had this meme uh, high school interview show about hip hop and rap with my friend. You created your own walk. podcast. Yeah, we used to just walk around with a camera and a mic and just interview people and like That's awesome. talk about rap. Yeah, it was super cool. It was, and that That's just, what? that made me fall in love with filming. Dude, you got to do that at Konama events. You got to bring that back. I want someone to yeah. start doing that. Like doing so Konama down. event vlogs where they just like walk around with a camera and it's like a guy interviewing random people, asking them dumb questions in the Konama. Yeah. Kind of like what uh, MJ from Dominards, he does those. But like obviously MJ doesn't make it out to all the events in North America. Yeah. So if someone were to pick up that mantle <laughs> and do those kind of interviews, dude, get like get four on minute vi Four minute vids from every comp. But I'll make those. If, if y'all would yeah. want to see that, just funny questions. I would love to do that again. Dude, people want that. I, I swear <laughs> people will, will crave that. I, cool. if, if that doesn't do well, I, I will... I, I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely make one. I'll make one at NACO this year. Hopefully it's in person and I'll make it in dedication to you. They're dedicated to Adam McNeil. And then it'll be like, sup dummies. It's Joe and we're at NACO. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's your yeah. favorite bean flavor? <laughs> who, who are you? If, like, if you see me at Chrome. the event, you can come and ask me a question. Bring me a cup of tea or something. Be like, yeah, we wanted to ask you what you thought of this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you how you feel about this Arizona green tea with a lot of sugar in it. <laughs> and you're like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you got sponsored on Chrome. It's been a huge grind. You've been putting out edits. You've been performing well. You, you did really well at a freestyle event not that long ago. I'm trying to remember which one it was, but you placed pretty high in, uh, was it Catch and Flow? Was that the event or was it NACO? It was NACO. I got top eight. It was NACO. Eight. Top eight. How'd that feel? Top eight. Great. It didn't feel the same as in person. I felt like I could have gone farther in person because I was I was so home that weekend. Um, but yeah, the vids I made, I grinded for some. It was something like two hours each run, and I didn't get my runs. Like I didn't get what I wanted. So, hmm. um, with all that going into account, I was very proud of myself to get seventh with two runs that I didn't. I wasn't a hundred percent with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt very good. Yeah. They were fire runs. I remember them. You were honed. I remember you also showed us yeah. them beforehand because, I mean, back back then, the group chats were off the chain. Everybody was oh, in yeah. group chats. Everybody was doing <laughs> Zoom calls. You name it. And and I remember pre-NACO, guys were just sharing their, like, NACO runs and comparing them with one another. I saw yours and I saw a couple others. I'm like, ah, 
I'm not even gonna enter. <laughs> <laughs> I saw so I saw Carter Justices. Shout out yeah. Carter, the, the the homie. He uh he was just going crazy on his runs, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, he's gonna be me for sure. Uh, but super satisfying highlight. I don't mean to like put him on blast or anything. He was one point under me, and I was the last spot in prelims. Oh man! Jake, you just shout out Jacob Lowe. Just <laughs> choked him out. <laughs> shout out Jacob Lowe. Love you, Jacob. Jacob Lowe is your rival. How did that come to be? Oh, he uh, he's just one of the nicest dudes I've ever met. He's one of the most genuine kind of. Kanama players in the game, his love for Kanama matches mine. His hype, his his hunger. Him, him and I have a very – it's like – I feel like it's Naruto Sasuke. That's like okay. the kind of feeling I get where it's like we're both absolute beasts in our own way that being rivals is the only way to push each other. Mm. Not that we're like great friends in that way because I, I wish I knew him better, but we haven't gotten the opportunity to hang out more. But um, his clips – I feel like push me in a way because we're similar, but not the same. So it pushes me in a way to be better mm. than mm -hmm. what I was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. he'll post. Cause I posted, I remember I posted late goon pinch jug cloud bounce and he did late goon pinch right into Ken cloud bounce spike. And then you're and like, just oh, like, okay, cool. Him. Yeah, great. I gotta go do one up on that. This freaking guy. And then I, <laughs> I dad, then I went and filmed for three hours, but it's like, Things like that is like, yes, that's what we need. We need people pissing people off to push that. Yeah, it's no, for real. It's awesome. For real. I think, I think we all got to get that hunger in us. We got to yeah. eat. We got to get yes. hungry. But okay, yes. I want to know who started the rivalry. Did you initiate it or did he? I did. Or was it I mutual? It. Joe's I, like, I, <laughs> I sent him, I sent him, I wish, I think I have the DM still. I, I can send it to you. Joe, but I Joe sent Nelson him. DM'd him and he said, I sent, hey, my name yeah. is Joe. I'm sponsored by Chrome Kandama. Like Chrome. I'm, I'm and he's like, <laughs> And he's like, oh, whoa. I, um, no, but I sent him a picture of my, of a white Converse shoe, like on my head. And I said like, hey man, just bring some, like, I said, I forget what specifically I said, but I said something along the lines of like, make sure to bring shoe shine next comp because I'll be wiping the floor with you on my shoes. <laughs> and I'm like, and then I sent like a cautionary message after in case he actually got mad about that. I was like, hey, by the way, like this is all for fun. I, would you like to be rivals? And he's like, yeah, I think you're going to need more than shoe shine because I'm going to stomp you. And I'm like, here, here we go. Let's, let's, let's do it. <laughs> it it's so. like a dating relationship in the Kanama world right now for rivalry. It's like, <laughs> You know, you, you drop your pickup line, which is really just a diss, but, you know, in, <laughs> yeah. in, a, in a playful manner. And then, and then you're so like, did, did they receive it well? Are, are oh, we, yeah. Hey, k k I'd, love, I'd love to be your rival. Could we go for coffee sometime? I keep checking my phone. I'm like, please respond nicely. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, it I, blossomed. Yeah, it blossomed into something just so sick. And now we just insult each other. It, it's, we're, at this, we're at this place where it's all love. We both know it's all love. And we just comment like, just trying to roast each other in the comments. Yeah. Him and Tio, him and Tio one time, I think it was like a few weeks ago, him and Tio like double teamed me on a clip, phrasing. Um, and they commented and he responded and then Jacob responded. And I was just like, damn, like, oh. You got, you got to get an ally on your side. Come on, yeah. Joe. I got to get somebody crazy. <laughs> Yeah, guys, uh, if you're if you're still here live watching this, uh, drop your favorite pickup line for a rival to, to get a new rival. Yeah. Yeah. I want to hear these, so drop them down there. We might read some off in a bit. Okay. That's uh, so good. Passed a little bit through Chrome here. Uh, give me a brief snapshot of what your favorite thing about being on the Chrome team is. Why, why is the Chrome team so cool? Chrome sessions, just being with the team, being with my boys. It's, it's, uh, it's different. Our team dynamic is very, like, is very, are we okay? It's very team centered. Are we okay as a unit? Not like, oh, Bonds is okay, but nobody else is cool. That's fine. Oh, Edwin's okay. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is not cool. Whatever. But it's, we're all as a team. And it's like, when we get together, we look forward to being with each other. We're like, oh, I needed this. I needed to see you people. Like, I'm mm -hmm. so glad we have five days together to just play Kanama and just mm -hmm. chill and just be with each other. It's tight. It's tight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, man. That's cool. That's cool. Chrome has always been one of those teams that has been around for forever and has a prestige to it, especially, you know, world champ own, world champ players, yeah. you name it. 
very, very high class team of players with professional levels of skills all around. Everybody on that team is very, very good at, at what they do and very unique styles. I wouldn't say that there's anyone on Chrome that is like another person on Chrome. Everybody has their own distinct style of play yeah. too. And I think that that's evident. And I think that for anyone else who's probably looking at getting sponsored by Chrome, you got to stand out. You got to have your own unique you to yeah. the game if you want to be on the Chrome team. Is that right in saying, would you say that that's a fair perception? Yeah, I would say, um, because we've talked about this as a team and I've talked with Skags and like, and things like that. It's all about you as a whole, how it all comes together, how everything fits into everything. So like, I even like, I even changed my highlight pictures to make them match my profile picture. Like it's all, and I know people might not find that important, but to Chrome, we find things like that important to make sure that like when people visit your page, it's like pops. Okay, that's Joe's page. Mm -hmm. You see my dumb glasses and my neon picture, and then you see all my vids. So it's like you, it's more or less to gain traction on your page. And it's also like just to fit the Chrome mold as a whole and not just as a slayer, not just as a cool guy, not just as a good filmer. Yeah. Yeah. You got to show up full piece. You got to you got to be the you gotta have, full package you gotta have deal. Everything. You got to yeah, you got to try your best to have everything. You don't have yeah. to be the man. You have to try not just be that person. You have to try your best to be that person because yeah. it's about the effort. It's about if you really care. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Maybe Sunday. We've we've had a few reps of Maybe Sunday on the show before. Carly Carlson, uh we had uh um Carter Justice on the show a while back talking a little bit about Maybe Sunday. So we've heard a little bit about who Maybe Sunday is, um, but what is your role with Maybe Sunday? And then we're going to talk about PDOX because nobody knows what PDOX is and we need the scoop on it. <laughs> I hope You're going to lay it down on us. I, I hope I can speak on it right. Uh, but Maybe Sunday, <laughs> my involvement with Maybe Sunday is just a, a player and someone who's contributing to the ideas. So I'm a, mm -hmm. I just rep, I play, I slay. And then when drops come, I make sure to get the drops out information to the people who want stuff from the drops out and then film with the merch uh, here yeah. and there. How, how did that re yeah. How did that relationship start? It's uh, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Who, what's the name of the guy who runs maybe Sunday? Chase. Chase. Right. Uh, how did, how did the relationship with you and maybe Sunday start? When did that happen? So I'm already homies with Carter. And I've, I've just been, uh, I've just been, and then me and Carly share a very similar taste in music. Her and I both like a rap group called, uh, Griselda. Griselda. Of, okay. Yeah. They're out of Buffalo. It's a, uh, they're out of Buffalo, New York. And they're a very, I would say grimy, uh, grimy gutter rap. It's bringing, it's bringing the essence of Wu Tang back into the modern era of rap in a new way. So it's like, you get that really hard feeling of like listening to Wu Tang again. It's just mm. it, it's the same kind of like nostalgic feeling okay. on a new like sonic wave, and it's it's so fire. And that's what connected you guys a little bit. You yeah. and Carly got close. Joined the Maybe Sunday Ta squad. Just talk that about squad that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Griselda. We got lots of fans of Griselda in the chat. Apparently. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to go check out some Griselda. I will send you some songs because some, okay. a, a lot of cuts are very intense. Yeah, send me, send me your favorite three. I'll listen to them. Absolutely. Let you, I'll let you know my thoughts. Ab absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and, then I'll, and then I'll ask you to be my rival afterwards. Yes. And then I'll let you know I'm on Chrome. And then we <laughs> but tell, you can tell and me. And I'll steal your I'm, Dama. I'm, al yeah. I'm already seeing, seeing someone as a rival. <laughs> <laughs> but can I have your Damas? <laughs> <laughs> I'll steal them okay. anyway. Okay, so that's maybe Sunday, your involvement there. Talk to me about PDOX. We've been waiting for this. Julian AD underscore asked, would love to understand more about PDOX 18, 18 PDOX 18, 18, 18, 18, whatever it is. <laughs> like, is it a brand? Is it a Dama crew? What is it, Bo? It's, um, so I'll Tell give us. you, I'll give you the origin and then I'll give you what we do and then I'll give you what I view it as because, okay. To be honest, each team member has their own perspective on what PDOX is. And I'll, okay. I'll get into that. So yeah. Um, so it was one weekend. It was the third time I was at Finn's apartment, or second or third. And then Matt Clifford comes. He's chilling. This is before we're even PDOX. 
Yeah. And then I bring Russ from New Jersey all the way up like to Massachusetts. Russ Goon. Russ Goon, yeah. The the freak the the legend himself. Um, oh yeah. Best space walker in the world. Um brought him up. Us four were chilling and we we chilled so heavy that weekend that we we needed like to make this something. We needed something out of that four, out of that quad. So we were talking and we came up with PDOX. We came up with Paradox. We came up with the number 18. Um, so PDOX stands for, stands for Paradox. Paradox, yeah. Okay, I didn't even know this. I'm literally the blindest person in the world when it comes to 18, PDOX, 18. <laughs> I just see A lot of people don't know 18s that. rolling through the chat. PDOX <laughs> on everything. I see people putting the PDOX logo on their clips like it's something. And I just need to know. I got to get the scoop. <laughs> So with that, with that origin, um, we started posting group videos because we felt the need that Kanama needed mob videos or crew videos because there wasn't enough. Nobody was making hard videos with memes and cuts and fast transitions with tricks in them. Like you'll see a trick from me and then you'll see some dude competitive juggling and then you'll see a kangaroo flip over a trampoline and then Finn's clip comes in. Like who wouldn't want to watch that? Yeah, I want to watch that right it's now. Just, can we end this so I can go? <laughs> absolutely. Not. We, um, no, no, so we're, we're sticking it out. It's super digestible niche content um, that people can just hop on the wave. People can hop on and love and people can look forward to seeing. It's something that we have fun making and people have fun watching. So it's all just okay. good energy. It's all good energy being circulated amongst crew to community, yeah. community to crew. Yeah. So you yeah. guys just decided that you guys liked spending time enough with one another yeah. and you wanted to create something that would bring yeah. you guys closer together yep. and that would inspire other people to do the same. To do the and same. Yeah. Yes. Dude, okay. I love that. That's hype. That's hype. So what is the 18 for? Is there a reason for the 18? Um, is it a secret? I, I yeah, kind of. I can't with, if you ever speak to Matt Clifford, he can give you a very good explanation just know it's the cruise number and it's our lucky number okay cruise and number, it brings lucky number. it brings good vibes it, okay yeah brings some good vibes 18 in the chat y'all know how to do yeah. it Drop and it's also when people say it or rep it when they're like oh do you know pedox like yeah 18 it's kind of just like an affirmation that people like it and it's a it's kind of a way to show love like if okay. if the pedox dama is on a post, you see a bunch of 18s, you know those people are a part of the PDOX family. Like, you know okay. they love PDOX. It's tight. You, you know that they're in the crew if they're, well, they're, they're part of the, the the Illuminati collective of whatever it is. You know, they, if they're dropping 18s, they know. Ken, yeah, the Ken Luminati. The Ken Luminati. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, but, but if I started putting 18s on posts, I don't know what it means. You know, am I just a sham or do no. I like, am I, am I, I don't know how this works. No, can so, anyone post 18? So there can be a definition to us as the crew, but to the, to the community and to people, it is whatever you want it to be. If it's a clothing brand to you where you check weekly to see if we've dropped new stuff, it's a clothing brand that you, that you like. If it's clips, it's a content creator that you like. If you okay. just love the energy behind how Finn and I yell in a video, that's you're in it because you're a fan of love. So if, I were to give my personal definition of PDOX. PDOX is a collective mindset of people that purely love companionship and kendama together. Okay. I yeah. like that. And That's anyone cool, can guys. be a part. Anyone is PDOX. Not anyone necessarily PDOX. in the crew, because the crew is what is what we started with. It'll just be players who we would want to put on, but it's like you're PDOX. I'm PDOX. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, if you are PDOX and you are tuning in live, go drop that 18 down in the chat. Show that love. Rep it. Yo, give it up for PDOX 18. You guys have made a big wave this year too. Like obviously it's, it's yeah. kind of blown up in terms oh of like God. everybody's kind of talking 18, PDOX 18. We're I can't at, not look in the chat and see yeah. it. Yeah. We started in 2020. We're almost at 1,500 followers a year later, yeah, that's, which that's is crazy. insane to me. Yeah. And so you guys are selling clothes. You guys are doing edits. Uh, what kind of merch do you guys have right now? And Shirts. then let's talk the Dama. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I don't have the Dama yet. I'm just itching. The gap. I'm itching. I know, I know. But um, so we make, we make, right now we have on the site, we have dad hats, we have beanies, we have shirts. Um, and we have more stuff coming. We always have stuff. Matt's always 
he'll literally he'll be so quiet and then he'll hit the group chat like all right cool i made bucket hats and bags today and we're just like sweet awesome like it's so yeah. sick do you um, contribute to the design process at all or is that mostly absolutely. matt just putting it in and then just saying hey look at what i created absolutely matt is um matt is someone i look up to and aspire to be like as a a creative mind he's mm. so open and he's so open to suggestion and then he turns it and flips it using everyone's suggestions with how he wants to do it he's like um we put out a we put out a hoodie it was just the p and mm -hmm. i think that battle at the border or the the weeks before that finn and i were both like yo that shirt with the p would look fire on a hoodie we show up at battle. He gives me a black hoodie with the P on it. Does he print his own clothing or does he get yes. it like made elsewhere? So he, that's <laughs> he gets a fast the clothing turnaround. and he has a print. Uh, he works with a shop for a couple things. So we right. have a hoodie. It's the eight bit hoodie. He worked with a shop for that. But um, all the shirts on the site, everything that's everything that's sewn is is uh, all done by hand. One oh. by one by one by one. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah, right on, yeah. right on. I like that. That's cool. I love, Brad. I love niche uh, companies in the Kanama community that are doing something different than making Kanamas. Yeah. I think that I think that those brands are some of my favorite brands because they're so in it for the culture of the game, more so than they're in it for the game itself. Like they're there for the people and they're there to play and they're there to just be homies and push that. And I love yeah. it. Absolutely. That's cool. I, Dude. Yeah. Oh man. This, this has been a good conversation. I have loved this so much. From Jersey and Minnesota, making sandwiches. We've talked through Chrome P-Dogs maybe <laughs> Sunday a little bit. Talking all about your thieving childhood. Yeah. You know, oh, my goodness. We, we've gone through a lot today. It is yeah. crazy. Uh, I know we've got a couple questions we'll hit up here at the end, but let me say a big thank you to you, and we'll, we'll start to wrap this, this bad boy up. But, uh, yo, man, thank you. Thank, thank you for you putting in the work for Dama and grinding for the community, grinding for the game, just putting on by pushing the game competitively, videographically, if that's even a word, you know, with media. It is editing. now. It, it is, is now. now. Absolutely. And just culture-wise, you've, you've added so much value. I think that I want to see more people showing up to events, looking to claim souls and games of Ken yeah. to get their name known. Like that, that's how I knew you. And you haven't changed in your hunger ever since. Oh, you are still just yeah. as hungry to grind. And now it's and now the it's the same hunger. Like, come try me. Like, come play me. I will. I'll play you in a game of candy. <laughs> you know, I'm pull all swivels on you. Get on me. Come on. Let's go. Oh yeah, swivel boy. I can't. I can't swivel. That's how you'll get me. <laughs> yeah. Well, Chrome Kanamas. They got them long spikes on some of them. It's hard to swivel on some of those doms. Yeah, there on the AK. Not, yeah, the AK, you can't swivel on that bad boy. That, uh, that's why I didn't play the Chrome AK. I was like, it doesn't play to my style. Dude, what, but, the, but the orange skelly, man. I know. <laughs> I thought about buying that because I had skegs on uh, right when that came out. And I was like, ooh, I should probably get that just before the interview so I could have it for it. But I didn't. And I regret it. I haven't bought new Kandamas in a while. I've been very fortunate. I have so many Damas. It's hard. Like that. It's you know, yeah. you got, especially you have like 13 ones from two months ago that are unplayed. You're like, oh, I got to play yeah. this. I just got I know. I, but then the new one comes out and you're like, oh man, I got to get that. The new <laughs> ones that we mentioned that are dropping, uh, Citadel Kanama, a Canadian brand, they're dropping a new Kanama that I'm excited for. And I just like already have three other Damas on their way to my house. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> I got so many. <laughs> That's, I love it though. It's such pure love. Have, fill your house up. It's just love. If you yeah, love it, yeah. who, who, who has the authority to tell you not to do it? Exactly. And that, okay, go, going back to the beginning, one of the things that I loved about this conversation is that, you know, that you actually pushed through the hardship of people not looking at Kanama as, as a positive thing and, you know, yeah. making fun of you, all that sort of stuff. You grinded through that. Uh, let me say a thank you for that because, again, it's the people like yourself that grinded through the crap that people threw your way that have now enabled us and for me and other players to show up with Kanamas around our necks and have people go, yo, you have a Kanama? That's sick. Yeah. That didn't happen except for people like yourself going through the hard work. So Yeah, and it's it's a shout out to the kids now who are in high school thinking cannot like who watch an edit from me or Dylan or anybody and then go to school with the edit still on their phone and they get made fun of. Like shout out yeah. all it's love. Don't ever let anyone tell you how to be cuz there's only one you and if you aren't you that person doesn't exist and we want that person to exist. We want to meet you. We want to play Kanama with you.
Yeah. Dude, preach it. I love it. Okay, yeah. let's hit up a couple questions here. We'll wrap it up. We'll let you close off some words. We'll give a little shout out of who's coming on the show next week. And uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up. And this has been a good one. Uh, we got a good question going back to the sandwich conversation. Naran Rajan <laughs> wants to know, is a hot dog a sandwich, in your opinion? Um, okay. By, uh, by cold You are a sandwich, sandwich expert. So I'm going to, because this is a huge debate, I'm going to dwindle it down for a quick answer to Jersey Mike standards. So for a cold okay. sub, when you cut all the way, you cut through the bread. So it's two halves. A hot dog is one piece of bread um, split, like hoagie style. So in a cold sub setting, no, it's not a sandwich. If you're making like a Philly where you don't cut through the bread, it's a sandwich. So it's up to you. Okay. So that, that's a complicated answer. Yeah. I like it. It depends on the bread. I think it depends on the bread, low key. Well, are you know. the type of guy that would put, like, you don't have a bun, but you got a hot dog. Would you take a, a slice of bread and wrap the bread around the hot dog and make a, a hot if dog? If I didn't have it? a bun, if I didn't yeah. have a bun, I, are you that guy? 100%. 100%. I'm not. I wouldn't do it. I only eat my hot dogs and hot dog buns. And if not, I just eat it as a plain hot dog. Like, you know, put it on a plate and cut it up with a knife. And cut and it. Fork. I, I, yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put it in a, in a piece of bread because bread for me, I like. I don't, I'm not a big sandwich person, but I really mm -hmm. like uh, bread with butter and like honey, peanut butter, Absolutely. jam, you name Absolutely. it. Like I think of bread in that category. And for mm -hmm. me to put like mustard and ketchup and a hot dog on it just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know. I feel that. I, I really do. I feel that so, some people, I'm just a bread person and I've grown up with sandwiches and just trying sandwiches and putting things on a sandwich just to eat. So like... Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I'm not a picky eater like that. Not yeah. that saying you're a picky eater, just like someone who's like, oh, I'm not going to have fucking tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, a sandwich, a, like a deli sandwich is my favorite food of all time. I'm a sandwich person. So it's just, it's up to you, whatever you want it to be. I think a hot dog is a sandwich to okay. end that question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, re real quick question. I listen to a podcast every now and then, uh, two comedians, it's called, are you garbage? And they ask all the best questions of asking your favorite, like celebrities or comedians, if they're garbage or not, they're trying to like, it's a fun podcast conversation. Yeah. They're finding out if they're classy or trashy with mm -hmm. your favorite comedians and stuff. One of the questions that I was asked, uh, and, and it's one of my favorites, cause I don't really get it, but I like appreciate it. Uh, you've been to New York a lot, right? Yeah, so New York, really famous for bagels. You can go pick up a bagel anywhere on the street, you name it. Yeah. Every corner's got a bagel guy. I, when you order a sandwich or a bagel from there, do you get it toasted or untoasted? Toasted. Toasted? For sure. See, they would say that that's not the right thing to do because it's a fresh bagel you're getting right off the block and you're like, okay, no, you got to get that thing untoasted. If you're toasting it, you're just you're demeaning the value of I that. see that. Of that, respect that it. sandwich. Okay. I respect it. That's if That's if you want bread consistency not if you want toast consistency if you want okay. toast consistency which is because who is who is anybody to tell you what how to consume your food you know what i'm saying so if i yeah. want a sandwich and i want my bread a little crunchy i'm gonna toast that mf -er, you know what i'm saying i'm gonna toast <laughs> because it, i needed because a part of that sandwich that i want i'm expecting toast quality and if i bite into sponge i'm gonna throw it back at the cashier okay Fair, fair. I'm, I'm definitely a toasted guy. Like, I don't think I, I, I don't think I would get it untoasted, but I've also never been. I feel like if I'm going to go, I need to do it authentically and get one of each and, and yes. try it both ways and then sit there and go, hmm, which one did I like more? I feel that. Anyway, so when I come down to NYC, we're doing our Grand Central Station Jam. Yep. I'm going to get some bagels. I'm also going to get a hot dog, going to get some uh, New York style pizza. I'm going to do everything New York. I don't even. We're going to take I don't a. Even know what, in the morning, though, we're going to take a train ride to Jersey because Jersey has the best bagels. And there's a New Jersey delicacy called Taylor Ham. Have you ever heard of it? No. Okay. So you Taylor think, Ham okay, is... But you think Jersey has the best bagels? Because I've Absolutely. had bagels from Montreal. Like Montreal York... bagels in Canada. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I'm talking, like, I'm, talking like, I'm talking like dude who's worked for his dad since he was like 11, took over the family business. And he's like, yeah, I make bagels. I've been making them for 60 years. You can't, you can't beat that, that like love. You know what I'm saying? You can't beat that love. Yeah, I've been making the bagels. Like, I don't care. Like, I, it, can be, it can be spiced and seasoned however you want it. I want to walk in and be like, how you doing, Joey? I'm like, eh, I'm good. Give me a bagel. You know, it's good. It's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's part of the experience. And Taylor ham is like a spiced breakfast ham. So it's like okay. Canadian bacon, but different. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm down for that. I like that. I like that. Okay. I'll come to Jersey too. I really want to do a full tour of the States one day. Yes. Post, East Coast. I'm, 
That's the hope. I'm really real hoping on it. East we'll do Coast. some live. The, the real hope is Brewview season three. You know, if this thing pops off and we can go back to, to do an in, in-person events, I'll bring Brewview on the road essentially and do actual live podcast episodes with the yeah. person in the same room, do it that style. Cause I think that would be the fun way to do it. You know, you bring the microphone, set it all up. I think that'd be so cool, but we don't really have that access right now. Anyways. Yeah. I'm Anyways. seeing, I'm seeing a lot of Taylor ham love in this chat and somebody said, shout out South Jersey as well. Shout out, shout out Taylor ham as well. Oh yeah. Taylor ham. Okay. <laughs> well, when, when you send me that Chrome gas, send me some Taylor ham with it. I'll send you some Taylor <laughs> ham. With, I got, dude, I got I in a freeze dried package. It'll be, it'll be icicles hanging off of that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, um, we got a question here from Julian AD. Thank you for Absolutely. bringing us back to the point of the conversation that we, we kind of almost skipped over. Chrome, uh, Lotus and PDOX collab. Yes. So talk to me about the Lotus PDOX collab and what that is. Um, we heard about it last Lo night on IKO. Yeah, so the Lotus PDOX collab is, from my knowledge, I could be wrong and the details are out this week for sure or uh, next week for sure, but I think it's Maple on Maple, Sticky Paint, Sacred Shape. Um, okay. And it's it's red, blue, green. Uh, that's PDOX's like colorway. Red, blue, green. And then it's Matt's hand drawn tagging, like a graffiti style, yep. drawn as the lines. So it's, oh, it's Matt's so hand drawn style. Are... Yeah. Our P18 oh. little star, P18 little star as the lines. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. And they have engravings I... on the cups. Yeah, it's super sick. Yeah, that's super cool. So is, is that a Lotus thing? Is it PDOX? Where are we going to be able to pick those up? Are they on the Lotus side or the PDOX side or both? Um, so I think the plan right now is the first drop of them is going to be available on both websites. Okay. That's and super if I'm cool. wrong, if I'm wrong, it's definitely going to be on the Lotus website. So keep your eyes peeled on the Lotus website. I'll have more information about the PDOX website drop if we do it there. Yeah, and they got the, the RGB string as well, right? Yeah, that's what uh, Brett was what was saying comes uh, in the RGB. It comes with Adrian string. Adrian's I didn't string. even know that. All right, that's even better. It comes with someone on shout out Adrian for real though. Yeah, Fuck, Adrian is love the him. homie. I, lo I love you, Adrian, so much. Um, he grinds his butt off for these strings, and he's like, "Yo, I'm gonna just make a whole new colorway because I love Pedox so much." So he's putting red, blue, green Pedox strings in with the Damas, and it's just it's just Lotus shape. PDOX are Adrian Strange, like what, like it's that's just a, that's a, a hype. collaboration. That's like the supreme, of, yeah. the supreme brand of Kendama. Yeah. That's super cool. That's I, so tight. <laughs> how, do you know how much they're going to be for, for people to pick up? I'm not sure. Okay. Not so guys, sure. just get your wallets I, less ready. Less than 50, less than 50. Set your, set your limits on your credit cards for 500 because who knows? <laughs> Thousand bucks. No, I'm just kidding. Less than $50 though. Yeah, absolutely. That's sick. Hey, well, let's hit maybe one more question here and then For let's sure. wrap it up. We are just past the two hour mark. This has been a good one. Uh, I am really stoked about this episode. Uh, Chan the man with a good closing question here, bringing it back to the game we all love. Least favorite and most favorite trick from any or least favorite trick from any trick list that you've ever had to do. Oh, my God. All right. Uh, my least favorite. Yeah. Okay. So I had to do pull up 1.5 can flip down spike. And um, my, it's not because of the trick. It's because of how it happened at the competition. I went 0-2 in open because my opponent, I'm not going to name names, my opponent started in Sara grip and did Ken flip down spike. I started in Ken grip and did 1.5. The trick list videoed showed 1.5 down spike. Isn't and the 1.5 easier though? Um, I, I don't think so. You think that a, a Sara grip? I can't Ken flip in Sara grip very well. Heard. It was it was certain players that could. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So that was your least favorite. More more for the yeah. complications of it, not for the trick itself. Yeah. I see. Yeah. That that's that's the new gen we live in in competitions where there's so many semantics now. Like I was yeah. I was judging for the AM Open in IKO, and the amount of like questions that we had to go through of like, can you do it this way? What about this way? Can I flip it? Can I pull it straight up? Can I do inward acts, regular acts? What if I fall in this way? It's like, oh my goodness, this is getting so complicated. Yeah. I think we <laughs> just, should- Just I watch the comps, video, do it. Yes. For comps, I think refs should be, I think, I think it should be less about fun. When it's in competition, it should be about competing. Like, yes, have fun, but the fun of it is to compete and get hyped. Refs, refs gotta be on it. Cause I was, yeah. I was pretty pissed off. <laughs>
That's fair. Hey, refs, yeah. we got to do happens. a good job out there. Happens. We make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time, but uh, hustle it and work hard as a ref. <laughs> Barely. Set a standard. Barely. No. Refs, Absolutely. Well, ref, hey, no. Shout out. Yes, I agree. Shout out refs, though, for volunteering. Absolutely. They, they work hard. They're literally talking all day and they're watching tricks closely all day. It is not, it's, it's tiring, right? And you just deal with people's crap it and you're is, like, it's uh, monotonous. I, I, yeah. Oh man. I shout yeah, out to the rest. Like, More people like should you're, do it. You're, yeah. Yeah. You're 15. Oh, we're, it's fine. we're losing Joe. Like, here. Ugh, I don't care anymore. We're <laughs> legging out a little bit there, Joe. <laughs> yeah all right hey well joe we let's now. wrap it up here and i want to know from you before yeah. oh he he's he's legging real bad there we go well, i think we, we got back? you back awesome we're back we're good sweet we're good awesome we back let's wrap it up here real quick before we we run out of joe's internet he's got a limited supply of it we've been <laughs> using up the tank he's been running it low yeah there's a joe. mouse on a hamster there's a mouse on a hamster over here just going yeah he hasn't fed it enough yet we've been going for too long uh, Joe, thank you so much for being on here. Thanks for everything you do. Uh, is there any last words you would like to say to the, the Brewview community, the Kendama community, the people that tune in and listen to this show every week? Yes, and an announcement as well. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for the continued support on everything. My journey with Chrome, maybe Sunday, and PDOX isn't, is far from over. Um, I'm just as hungry as ever, if not more now. Um, I'm so excited to put out content and bust my ass to really like push Kendama to where it wants to be. And I, I won't be filming as many edits this year, but quality over quantity for sure. Um, I'm going to eat and pop to November. Pop to November. Too. November. It is going to be, okay. it's going to be one to remember this year for sure. Are you already filming it? Yes. And I'm, I'm Crazy. giving myself that amount of time because I know it's going to be a war. This, this edit is going to be a okay. war. Every trick is going to be a war, for sure. All right. So we're, we're looking forward to some heat coming out in November. I'm that very is very excited. exciting. Yeah, I'm very well, excited. Right on, Joe. Congratulations again on your sponsorships, your, your work with PDOCs, and maybe Sunday. You are very decorated by the community, uh, and for good reason. You've hustled, and you've grinded for it, and mad props to you Thank for you it. Thank you so much, Adam. Shout out so, you, Adam. Everything you do too, dude. I'll send you a DM later, but I love you, dude. <laughs> oh man. Well, well, thank you. I love you too. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> Can we be rivals? Dude, I, I will steal all your dollars. <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Joe. Um, let me uh, tell tell the community here a little uh, bit about what's coming up next week and get them excited for next week's episode because we got the one and only. Wyatt Bray wow. is coming go. on the Brewview next week to share a lot about his story. He is a world champ. He has been a pro for CUSA and has been in the community for a very long time. And there's so much going on in the community around Wyatt. And we are going to be diving into his story and hearing more about it. So guys, make sure that you set those notifications for these IG lives. They go on pretty much every weekend on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern. This one was a special one because of the episode, but uh, make sure you tune in there. If you want to have your questions asked in priority for those questions make, or for that interview, make sure you guys head over to the Patreon and consider signing up for $5 a month. That helps support the show and keep the lights on over here at the Review Studio. So thank you guys so much. And we will see you next week. Joe, thank you, man. Thank you so much, Adam. Let's do this again in the future sometime. This is Dude, super well fun. I, I have so many people I want to keep bringing back. It's, I'm going to have to do like one episode a month coming up soon where we do a, a, a callback episode to someone yeah. who's on. But I feel like I got to get more people on the show first. I do at least a full year of, of, do of, a, of a guest and then we'll, and then we'll bring it back, you know? Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, Joe, thank you so much. And guys, we will see you next week. Take care. Next week. Later y'all. Thanks again.